Welcome back, everyone, to another fabulous episode of the fastest growing podcast under the Mason Dixon line. It's Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your lovely host, Don. You guys haven't seen me in a while. I've been in the backgrounds making things happen, but I'm back. I would love to say that my hair is more lavish than Don King, but you guys can't see it. Shout out to Renee. She got me right. I want to take a moment to shout out. the entire CFL, I know I have on a Winnipeg Scully, but I'm supporting the entire CFL, as you guys know, no, the new show. No, Winnipeg, Georgia, the best. Nick, I need you to shut the fuck up. Um, I have on a Winnipeg Scully, and yes, um, a good friend of mine's, I'm not going to say his name, played for the Winnipeg uh, team, and, and he got his nephew a jersey, so shout out to Nick for doing that. Uh, but this is just a shout out to the fact that we have a new property under our umbrella. Come on, CFL. You guys pay close attention to that. We are in partnership with Bet99 and we're super excited for it. So that's the the, the, the little nod for the Scully today. Um, I want to introduce my co host, the guys that make this show and this network run. You guys, the floor is yours. Introduce yourselves. It's Nate Taylor, baby. Uh... Former CFL Great Cup champion, three times. Um, Division One basketball player, yeah, three times. Division One basketball player uh, for three years. Started point guard. Um, what else did I do? Shit. Oh, self-proclaimed fastest man in the world, baby. In two thousand twelve, a hundred meter dash with no allows, and no allows will be behind me. That's how fast I am or was. Okay. <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. Good to know. Good to know. What's up, everybody? This is Rudy Rodriguez Shomont. You know me by now. Whether it's Rudy's Rant, Combat Corner, or giving Nick an education on sports, I'm always here for it. Thank you all. We are over 1,000 subscribers. We're coming on 1,100. And it's because of y'all that, you know, you support our channel, and we greatly appreciate all the likes, comments, shares. Keep doing it. And follow us at... Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Come On Now Podcast, and on X at Come On Now Pod. Come on now, let's go. Awesome, guys. We're going to dive right in because I have to catch a flight to Iowa, not to meet with Caitlin Clark's parents. I know Rudy would love that. I'm going to see if I can get him some swag while I'm there. Uh, We're going to just dive right in and talk about my beloved and Rudy's beloved, New York Yankees, and what the fuck is going on in the Bronx. I'm going to start off by saying I don't like what I see. Uh, the morale is low. It's really weird because the judge is playing really well. And, you know, he's typically been the fire starter for us in the past. But I think in a weird way, his his good play is really hurting us. Is, if that makes sense, it's weird. I, I, I don't know what's going on. Our pitching is lackluster. Uh, I've never been a huge fan of our manager. I know that's controversial to say, but I just, I don't see us adjusting. And if this continues to happen, we're going to go into the postseason with no momentum. And the American League is really freaking good. I don't, I don't know if people pay attention to that because we had such a far, a far ahead lead in the beginning. It was like, oh yeah, the Yankees are just going to take it. It's like, no, do you see the way the rest of the teams are playing? Do you see the way the Red Sox have handed us our ass the last couple of games? Like, have, have, do you see how horrible our defense has been, our infield defense? It just, just doesn't look good at all. And um, as a person that believes in the A-Rod Rodriguez, Aaron Rodriguez, no, Alex Rodriguez, I'm sorry, Aaron Rodriguez, uh, Alex Rodriguez curse of 2009, I truly believe, in, and Nick likes to laugh at that, since we cheated, the baseball gods are not going to give us one for 30 years. And that was 2009, it's 2024. I'm expecting another pennant in 2039. But um, some people get excited. I'm not one of those people. So, uh, Rudy, I'll let you get some things off your chest. I'm, I'm of the mindset this is going to happen you, because we cheated. Uh, hold on, baseball hold on. gods don't like that. Yeah, You were definitely excited week one, bro. You were excited. You were really excited. I was excited for two months. On the podcast, y'all were excited. I was excited for two months, but I knew the baseball gods were going to arrive, Nick. I knew they were going to arrive. 
we cheated in 09. They were going to arrive, Nick. Okay. And you know what A Rod keeps doing? He keeps putting his name on use UFC fits. The baseball guns don't like that. They don't like seeing his name on gyms. All right. They're gonna they're gonna continue to do their job and they're gonna let us get excited. You know what I feel like right now? I feel like a Cowboys fan. <laughs> that's how I feel. I feel like a Cowboys fan. And that's a terrible mental state to be in to be a Cowboys fan. So I'll let Rudy get some things off his chest, but that's just how I feel. I don't like the momentum. I don't like our energy. We don't seem like we're excited to play anymore. We were playing for fun in the beginning of the season. Now it just looks like work and night. It just doesn't look good. So the, the Yankees are seven. And, the Yankees just won, thankfully. They, they just won two to one tonight in Tampa. Thank God. Because yesterday they lost five three. They have their pitching was fantastic in April and May, and Luis Heel was nine and one. He was humming. Carlos Rodon looked like the guy that we paid one hundred and sixty eight million for, and um, Cortez was pitching well. Um, and then Clark Schmidt gets hurt. And he was pitching really well, too. And he gets hurt just in time for when Garrett Cole comes back. And you know that Garrett Cole's not up to speed right now. I mean, he's pitching five innings. And the the fact is the the pitching has – Rodon has fallen apart. Mark, Marcus Stroman, he's pitched really well as well. Carlos Rodon has fallen apart, yeah. and that's a problem. Rodon has fallen apart. He's gone back to giving up home run balls like like people hand out Skittles to kids. It's just ridiculous watching him just serve up gopher balls that were out of the game. We're out of the game before the second inning because when when he's out there because he's just giving up homer balls left and right. But it's the bullpen because even when the starters pitch well enough, the bullpen is giving this shit away. Clay Holmes gave away a game the other day. We're up three to one against Boston in the ninth, down to the last strike, and gives up a two run homer. You go into extra innings. They give up a homer again. It's Tommy Canley gives up a homer. It's five three. Lose the game five three and ten. I still hate that ghost runner thing. I think it's the fakest ex- example for baseball because it's not real baseball. But it, it, they have. They're seven and seven and seventeen since they started forty nine and twenty one. They were cruising, they were playing great, and then all of a sudden it just it's gone the other direction. And this is like a reminder of a couple of years ago when they were on fire, and then the second half of the season played like absolute dog shit. Aaron Judge is the best player in the world. He's hitting, I mean. He at one point he was he was leading in batting average again. He leads the league in homers. He leads the league in RBI. I mean, he leads the league in total bases. He leads the league in I mean, he's second in walks behind Soto. He was leading the league in on base. Now he's second behind Soto. He leads the league in in, in slugging, OPS. Second in war to Gunnar Henderson. Like this guy is leading. He's he's going to be the AL MVP. If he doesn't get hurt, he's the ALL MVP again. He's playing better than he played two years ago when he hit 62. And yet, their pitching is killing them. And this is where my problem lies with Aaron Boone. I'm not a Boone fan, and he does this every freaking year. He wears the bullpen out so damn fast to where they absolutely hit a wall by the middle of the season. They've hit the wall. I mean, all of them. They're all struggling. It's not like there's one. It's like they're all. It doesn't matter who he puts out there now. All their arms have gone limp. They're all limp noodle arms now. It's just ridiculous. It, 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 you think they're going to have a series where now, okay, they're going to turn it around. The Cincinnati Reds, they get swept at home. I think it was at home, right? How do you get swept by the Cincinnati Reds on your home field? They're one of the worst. They're, they're awful. They're now in second place behind the, the Orioles. They're not 
obviously there's a long there's still a long way to go but this is not inspiring i think they found a good young player in rice who's been who's filled in pretty well for uh anthony rizzo and i think rizzo's done um john carlos stanton his injury sucked because he was actually playing well well to the standard of which i would call well for him he's still hitting 245 but if you think about it last year he was hitting 170 exactly you know him hitting 245 is a win and he had like 17 homers he's hitting the ball but last year he's hitting 170 like when you have a guy hitting 170 to 245 i'll take 245 all day now it has gotten – they better figure it out. They better figure out. I don't know what they can trade. I was hoping Jason Dominguez would be coming up, but he got hurt again. I did a setback, so he's not good. The Yankees have four nine-hole hitters in their lineup right now. Four. And Boone is doing that shit where he's messing with the lineups all over again. We were playing fine with Anthony Volpe leading off. Now Volpe's batting average is – come back to earth a little. He's in, when he was hitting 275, 285, we were cruising. He's on base. He's a table setter. And Soto and Judge have guys to, to move over and put and drive in. Soto's been fantastic as well. He's been absolutely – he changed the way the team played early on this season. He was really a, a inspiring for these guys. DJ LeMahieu comes back and Oswaldo Cabrera stops playing. I hate that. I don't know why. Gleyber Torres – Hitting 225, still loafing to first, still botching plays in the field. Have we not figured out by now that Glaber Torres is not the answer? Yeah. At this, I mean, at what point do we do we cut ties with Glaber Torres? Every time I want to cut ties, he does something good, but then he goes back to doing some some of the dumb shit. So it's like, get, please cut cut the cut the string with Glaber Torres. I don't know where it went, Oswald. Peraza's supposed to be back. I know he's been on the on the, on the shelf. I don't know when he's due back, but when DJ LeMahieu came back, it's like they felt the need to jam his ass back. In, it's like it's like jamming that square peg into a round hole. And the second they did that, went like that. I don't need. I'm gonna actually check right now, real fast, because I want to see when he actually came back. Because he's been fucking terrible. He's been horrendous, just like he was the last two seasons. So if we're sitting here talking about, you know, what, what when do you, I mean, we're sitting talking, talking about when you see a season change, he comes, he came back on May 28th. Since May 28th, we are two, four, six, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh my word. I think it was 14 and 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. We are 14 and 19 since DJ LeMahieu came back. I don't want to call it a coincidence, but since DJ LeMahieu came back, our lineup's gone to shit. On the shit. And they keep trying to force that, that, that square peg into a round hole. DJ LeMahieu was hitting, as of yesterday, as of, I'm sorry, Sunday, 194. He bumped it up to 206. I don't know what he did tonight. I mean, we went 2 1, so I, I can't assume he did anything. But this is what we got. And they keep trying to force DJ LeMahieu in there because he's being paid $20 million. Yeah. If he wasn't being paid $20 million, we're not even have, he's not even in consideration to be on the field because they were cruising until he came back. I mean, two, he's hitting 202 with zero homers and 11 RBI. This is a Major League Baseball player? We're playing Trent Grisham in center field right now, and Judge is basically playing DH, which I don't like. I prefer having Judge in the field. I like Judge in the field. I think he hits better when he's playing in the field as well because he's he was on fire, and he got a little slow the last week or so. I mean, it's going to happen and all, but Trent Grisham can't really hit. I mean, albeit today he had one of our RBI. For the most part, he can't hit. You know, so you look, Verdugo, they had Verdugo leading off today. And what does Verdugo do to start the game off? Swings at the first pitch, pop up to the catcher. Leadoff hitters do not swing at the first pitch. Like, that's literally your job is to table set. That's why I don't get the Volpe switch. Volpe was playing very well. Keep him in the leadoff position. Now he's hitting fifth, sixth, seventh. What? I mean, God almighty. They had this kid, Rice, was leading off. He had three homers versus the Red Sox in that game, in that, in that series. 
and then the next game we don't score a run. They need to figure it out quickly. The pitching, they're, they better be doing making some moves for this bullpen because Boone has worn this bullpen into the ground. Luis Gill, Luis Hill, he pitched really, really well his last game. That was against the Red Sox. Gave up the one homer to Rafael Devers. He left the game in a one nothing game on Sunday. Did all he could do. But we need, to, we need Rodon to figure out what the fuck is going on with him. He needs to f- go to a therapist or something because he was 9-2 and two and now he's 9-7 and seven and getting hammered. So, yeah, very disappointing, very concerning. And I, and I don't like overreacting, and I didn't for the first week or so, but now we're talking about a month. <laughs> no, for the Yankees, I don't – It's long, baseball's a long-ass season. I don't overreact in baseball. In baseball, I don't overreact because it's a long season. Aaron Judge, Don, I'm in Facebook groups. Yankees fans, I had to leave the Facebook group because these imbeciles were talking about we need to trade Aaron Judge, cut Aaron Judge because he was hitting 170 in April. It's like, are you stupid? That's like, this I'm is the type of thing that exists with Yankees fans. Yeah. Cut Aaron Judge. And, and it wasn't just the sum. It was a lot of people. The worst contract ever. You know what? He's having a better season right now than he had two years ago when he earned that contract. I don't want to hear that shit. But they were ready to trade him, and he and since then he's hitting 390. In May and June, he hit 390. Like, what are we talking about with a 730 slug and some shit like that? Something he had he had ridiculous numbers. And then so with baseball, I don't overreact because it's a it's a much longer season. But when you talk about a month where you're playing like complete and utter horseshit as a team, it's concerning. And it always always go it always ends up back with Aaron Boone and his absolute. It's it's shocking to get an entire segment where Nick doesn't say anything. I kind of enjoyed it. I kind of enjoyed it. I'm not gonna lie. Um, us winners over here with 27 chips, we get a chance to you know go back and forth and talk our shit. But um, as we uh, segue off our beloved New York Yankees, we're gonna go right into Angel Reese. Uh, Nick, what are, what are your thoughts on Angel Reese? What what happened? Educate us. What what do you want to discuss? Angel Reese. <sighs> So, uh, I'm on both sides of the fence on this one. I know Rudy going to be like, damn, Nick, you, you're on both sides of the fence on this one. Yes, the only reason I'm on both sides of the fence because, all right, in basketball, you don't do this in this situation. You, know? you don't do this, dog. You have you get the ball, you get the shot blocked. Kennedy Carter brings the ball down the court. Um, okay, she- give the entire situation, Nick. You're leaving people out. Give the entire – what was the situation? They're up. They're up seven. And they get the ball. What are you talking about? They get the ball. Oh. How, how much time? Angel Reese has nine points. There's 17 seconds left on the clock. There's usually 24 seconds on the, on the, on the entire clock. So the, the shot clock is off. So in this situation, in basketball, you don't shoot the ball again. Especially when you're up. You're convinced another team gave up. They, they basically hand you the win. They don't foul you anymore. You don't shoot the ball. That's just knowing what you don't, you don't do. That's just a basketball thing. And my thing I used to get, only thing I didn't used to get mad at was um, when players got mad when people did shoot the ball, when they had a shot clock, when they actually did have a fucking shot clock, and they shoot the ball, and, and players get mad in that situation. I call that some, some I call that soft-ass shit. Because, well, they, why get a turnover when the clock is still running with a shot clock? You get the ball up. But in this situation, there there is no shot clock. You just you just dribble the ball out. And Jerice runs down there to the post. She begs for the ball. Kennedy Clark, Kennedy Carter looks off at first, but then she under, she understands the magnitude of the situation. She ha- she gives her give her she gives her the ball. She gets fouled. She goes to the line. She hit two free throws. Go ahead, Rudy. Kennedy Carter didn't give her the ball. Who who was that? Kennedy Carter did not give her the ball. Kennedy Carter dribbled the ball up the floor. She drove. She drove down the down the, down the right sideline. Yes. Turned turned back around. Yes. And was just dribbling it out. Yes. Angel, Angel Reese is begging for the ball. So and then she gave her the ball. Mar- Marina Mabry is screaming, pointing at Reese. Kennedy Carter gives it to Mabry, who then dumps it into Angel Reese. That's I thought. Kennedy, that's what happened. That's I what happened. Kennedy passed it to. And I watched Kennedy Carter's post game interview where she says, "Well, I had no idea. I forgot. I'm so glad they reminded me." No. Please. Yeah. So, all right. Because so, she yeah. actually made it, she actually made her coach look really bad too. Because she says the bench was saying the bench was saying get it into her. Well, this is why I don't. Believe. I don't believe. I don't believe that. I don't believe Teresa Weatherspoon, old school Teresa Weatherspoon, is saying dump it in the post. You're up seven. Yeah. They're letting. They're not fouling you. Dribble it out. Yeah. Of well, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. See, this is why I'm straddling the fence on this man. Because at the end of the day, 
WNBA all sports, this just is entertainment. They're playing at home in front of their home crowd. The crowd wants it. So the crowd wants it. You give her the ball, you let her score. But when you come to like fucking just having just a competitive spirit and you just, you know, having some damn BCC in the sport of basketball, you don't shoot that ball. You don't you don't do anything in that situation. You dribble it out. And that's what the fuck happens. But in this situation, I understand this is what the fans want. But on Andrew's behalf, it looks really weak. So when I hear other fans, y'all go, y'all gonna tell me about this whole double double shit. That's really false. It's really not real right now. It's really bullshit. But for the fan situation, for the for the for the team, you know, for injuries going for it, I don't have a problem in that scenario because of the fans. It's just entertainment at the end of the day. Let them have their fun. Let the fans celebrate it. But when y'all come to me about this whole Caitlin Clark situation and y'all compare the two and y'all throw double doubles in my face, that's bullshit. I don't want to hear about that shit anymore because it's, it's rigged. It's, it's it's really rigged on how she got how she got her. 14th double double to extend this record. And at the end of the day, it's a double fucking double, man. I never heard Ice Cube made a song about a double double. And in the day he said, he said, he, he didn't make a song about having a double double. He said he fucked around and got a triple double. So when y'all telling me about a double double, it's harder than a triple double because she did it 14 times. Obviously, fucking not, because everybody gets a double double. But a triple double is freaking hard to get. That's why there's only been like 35 of them in the WNBA during their 28 years' existence. So that's when I that's when I draw the line when I hear about the situation. But when it comes to this particular game and and how it happened, I'm not so mad about it. Just for the fans' experience, you know, giving them what they want. They want to see this. They want to see the continue. They want to see it grow. Let it grow the game. I'm I'm happy with that when it comes to that part of it. But when it comes to just Angel Reese and how they went about it to get it, it's bullshit. I don't want to hear about double-doubles no more. Y'all throwing that in my face every time online about this and how she got it. And last game, it was kind of bullshit how she got it also. So I don't want to... I, I, I'm tired of hearing about that when it comes to that part of it, Rudy. So when it, in, the, in that whole game scenario, I'm not so mad about it personally. But when it comes to the noise after it about this double-double, that's when I call bullshit. I already did a rant on this that I posted immediately because I just couldn't stop. I was yeah. just so disgusted. I was so disgusted. In fact, I didn't even. I, I was so disgusted about it when I saw it. You actually pointed it out to me, so I went back and watched because I was watching the Mystics game against uh, Indiana, mm-hmm. and um, to see how it worked out, it, it's just not. It's not how you do things. This is not how you do things. You. It, it would be like I can come. It's like the team that's supposed to take a knee on the yeah. 50 with two seconds left and they're up 21. No, and they decide and I'm going to fake kneel it and have Tyreek Hill run down the field and throw a 50 yard touchdown pass. If Ty, so, Tyreek Hill can go break the yardage record or touchdown record or both records for that matter. That is weak shit. You can't look back and like literally take pride. I mean, you could. The thing is, she already had the record. This is just an extension of the record. So you're taking pride in a fake accomplishment? This is a fake accomplishment. This is not an accomplishment. On top of that, did the Atlanta dream player Tina Charles foul her on purpose? I don't think she so. literally she bear hugged her. Why are you why are you fouling? You weren't fouling them on the perimeter. Why would you, she literally bear hugged her as soon as she got the ball? But I just think the whole thing reeks of it, it stinks. Because first off, Angel Reese begging for the ball is a bad look. It's a bad look. You're up seven. There's eight seconds left. The game is flipping over. And you're more worried about your numbers than the W. Because she always comes back and say, all I care is that we won. They said, no, you don't. So that's the, that's the, no, the, 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 the thing. No, you don't. You cared, that, you, you cared about your numbers. Because when you come back later on and say, all I care is that we won, today you show that you don't care about winning. That winning is cool, but it's not the most important thing for you. Because if it was, you would not have been raising your hand for the ball because there's no reason for it. They're not fouling you. They backed off. Mabry is sitting there saying, get it into her. I'm like, this is, this is honestly pathetic. This is pathetic. I can't even uh, – th- this wouldn't have happened in the NBA. There would have been the fake tough guy push and shit like that. But this wouldn't have happened because NBA players dribble the shit out. Game is over. I'm not talking about turning the ball over. I hate. I don't. I'm not with that. Really? I don't know why t- people turn the ball over on purpose. Really? What? We have, we have seen NBA players throw the ball on the backboard to try to get a triple double before. That's and that's and that's pathetic. And and I've actually seen that freaking thing negated by the yeah. scorekeeper. Yeah. 
But they we negated it. We have seen NBA players do this. Yes, th- that's pathetic, and I and I've seen that negated. But so, and, but, this, but, the, but the game was but the game when they do that's not over. Yeah, I don't even was, know if it's over or not. If they did that shit with three seconds left, that's even more ridiculous. This game was over. Yeah. This game, if this game was seventy six to seventy four, first of all, they're fouling immediately. Yeah. But it wasn't. And yes, I've seen NBA players do some stupid shit, and it causes problems. It causes problems. Like, I mean, remember the Kansas, the kid, the Kansas University Kansas game where the kid from another school steals it from behind the guy's back in mid court. They're down forty five. He mm-hmm. goes and he dunks and he starts flexing. It's like. You look like a cornball. You can't look in yourself in the mirror and say that record is legitimate anymore. That mm. record, I don't want to hear about the record anymore because the record's it done. It's because done. on top, because on top of that, she 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 got the against Seattle. She got ten rebounds with two minutes to go, on her own shot being blocked and her catching the ball. I don't think a blocked shot that you catch of your own it's should be a rebound. rebound. That's not a rebound. Huh? That's not a it's a rebound. It is a rebound by rule. It, rebound. it should not. I agree with you. I don't think that's just like just like the assist where you drive to the basket. You're in front of the rim. It's wide open. Your teammate comes and you just say, here you go. That's not an assist. It's an assist. That's fake. That's fake. And if someone did that and that got him a triple double or a double double or whatever, I would say that's horseshit, too. But what are you going to count? <laughs> What do you count? I wouldn't count as I would I would you know how they call Badano uh, stealing second base and they don't throw the they don't throw the second it's, uh catchers in indifference? In yeah. They don't give him a stolen base. They don't give him a stolen base when that happens. So when they just give you the base, they don't give you the stolen base. It's mm-hmm. bullshit. Mm-hmm. So I don't like that crap. Yeah. And then they're saying though well, Caitlin Clark was, was stealing rebounds in her triple double from her teammates. What? No, she was pushing the ball down the floor. That's just that, that stuff gets really? so stupid to me. It was I can't even tell. In the game, what did they? Yeah, do? I know. And she's pushing the ball, and they're coming back from eleven points down. So yeah, that's just she wasn't stealing rebounds for nobody. That's just dumb. I will actually watch games if I have. This is not Russell Westbrook, Stephen Adams type situation. One of the best rebounders I've seen. She's, with the, she's ball the number one guard rebounder in the league. So I don't want to hear about how she's stealing rebounds. Mm-hmm. This situation right here, the one where she gets a rebound off of her own block shot, off of her shot being blocked. As I told you the other day, she uh, 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 until today, 185 shots. She's had 40, um, 185 layup attempts. She's had 40 layup attempts blocked. Because she shoots blocked. Under, because she shoots huh? underhand. And she can't jump, and she shoots the ball from her hip in the whole nine. And and she, uh, how many of those are, are rebounds? A lot. She rebounds that a lot because it comes right back to her, so and, they cool. get, and you get a rebound for that. They put it. I'm not discount. I'm not discounting Angel Reese's success this year. I have said it. I said before, I didn't think she'd be this damn good. No. I didn't think she'd be this damn effective in the league. She's far exceeded my expectations. She's having a very, very good year. Without a doubt, I give her much credit. I constantly c- commend how hard she plays in the whole nine. I will do that all day long. Her offensive game still is awful to me. It's awful. Don't tell me about her, about Caitlin Clark shooting 40% when. Reese is shooting 42% shooting layups. And when Clark is in two-point range, she shoots 50%. Like, I don't want to hear that. So, like, you know, like the, the record. So, yesterday, Caitlin Clark was the rookie of the year. Now, today, Angel Reese is the rookie of the year because they have, they're one game ahead of the, the fever now. Like, this is what we're doing. This is, this is stupid. Yeah. Caitlin Clark had 29-13. We're about to jump into that. She had the, this is a stat line that's never happened in the NBA or the WNBA. But I think it's a – I would never feel – I don't feel comfortable with fake records. It would be like if Aaron Judge is about to try to break 62 if they throw him batting practice pitches. I don't like that shit. That's not, that's not earned. That's not an earned situation. I, I don't think anyone with any, any self-respect likes getting stuff that way. I, I don't believe it. Not in sports. This is not, this is, I mean, same reason I have feelings about the Bronny situation. But in sports, I, I hold stuff like, you, should, you earn this crap. And, and even against uh, the Minnesota Lynx, before she... She tied the record. There was a bogus foul called with her and Nafisia Collar hooked up on a rebound with like 20 seconds to go, which gave her free throws on a up on a rebound that I mean, people were wondering if Nafisia Collar fouled her on purpose. They're up nine to get her on the line so she could keep the freaking the double double. I don't think she did. I yeah. thought the call was bup kissed by the ref, but she's been propped on a couple of them. Hey, whatever. This one 
was completely ridiculous. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's an end all for me. I'm not counting this anymore about the double. This double. is done. I don't, don't tell me if she has 25 straight games. Oh, she had a 25 game double. No, no, she didn't. It ended at 13. It ended at 13. Okay, with that being said, let's just go right into Caitlin's performance. Caitlin Clark balled out today, but it doesn't mean shit. They lost. They lost. They lost to a bad team. And they lost to a bad team because they have a horrible coach. They have a horrible coach. This is the most unprepared team I've seen. Every time I talk about this lady, it's the same crap. It gets worse. She's, huh? It gets worse. It gets worse and worse. So you're practicing, and you're they turned the ball over eight times in the first quarter. Samuelson, who doesn't belong on the court, turned over three straight possessions. The Fever was shooting over 50% end of the first quarter, down nine points. Why? Because the Mystics had taken 10 more shots. Because the Fever kept fumbling the ball away. And it wasn't Caitlin Clark turning it over. It was Samuelson, Mitchell, Boston. I think Clark had two of them. But she had one and then one in early in the second quarter. But they gave the game away in the first quarter with turnovers early on. It was turnover, 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 because guess who's not getting the ball in her hands? Clark. She's not getting the ball. They ran no pick and roll action with her and Aaliyah Boston. Aaliyah Boston never got in the game in, in the game at all. Aaliyah Boston then has two fouls, ends up on the bench, but again, never in the game. Your, your initial first five plays need to be running pick and roll action with her and Aaliyah Boston. You've got to get Aaliyah Boston in the game. Oh. She sat in she sat in Alyssa Smith to start Hull. But she's starting Hull instead of – she should be starting Hull over Samuelson. Samuelson stinks. Samuelson can't guard a parked car. She looks – she makes Duncan Robinson look like Kawhi Leonard on defense. That is the worst – she is the worst defensive player I have seen in basketball. They Their help is atrocious. They don't know how to shuffle their feet. They get caught on screens. The big doesn't hedge out. They just watch them run around in a circle. They it, it is it is so bad watching Samuelson play defense. It's embarrassing. And they run and the Mystics are five or they were five and seventeen. They're running the same shit over and over. Kelsey Mitchell can't guard anybody either. She's awful defensively. Clark isn't great defensively. She's not very good defensively she's either. She's a defender. She's she's better. But she, you know what? She's got more block shots than Angel Reese. She's a guard. She has four times as many block shots. So, and she and she knows how she un, she's not good at defense, but she understands positioning. These other women don't understand positioning. They don't understand that you need to move in a certain angle to cut off the angle. And and it and it happens over straight B lines on pick and roll right to the basket. Running the same shit over and over again. But they fall behind. They're down 14 at the half. Caitlin Clark does not come out of the game for one second. Boston's really never in the game. And you go in the second half, and they have the game at 59-50. They dump it in to Boston. Well, Clark gets it into Boston. Boston puts up a shot that goes in. She's turning. She gets hit by the by the big for uh, Mystic, the Mystics, Colson. And this girl's really big. She's a big girl. She bangs right into it. It was a clear block. Clear block. Hey, look, people, you're going to tell me I'm, a, I'm biased. It was a block. Aaliyah Boss was turning, and her elbow catches her on the chin. Basket goes in. They call a block and one. They challenge it, flips it around. Aaliyah Boss about to have, had four fouls. She played with four fouls from the nine-minute mark of the third quarter all the way down to the four-minute mark. When this happened, she, she elbows her in the face. It, to me, it was an and one, and you want to call a technical foul, go right ahead, but there's no way in the world that that was an offensive foul. It was a defensive foul. They reverse it. Boston now gets her fifth foul to the bench. Again, why was she on the floor with four fouls with four minutes going to the third Cause, quarter? Because they're down. They're trying to – I mean, at this mm-hmm. point, they're trying to get back in they the They were game. coming back. They were coming back. You got to sit her. You got, you got to sit her. She's not, she's not quick enough. She's not, she doesn't play smart enough. That's, that's the thing you like that. You got to sit her. You got to sit her. I mean, if you take her out and it gets worse, then... Well, well, what ended up happening was it got real bad real fast. Mm-hmm. And they were down 22 going into the fourth. 
And it, I mean, it was like this. She sat Caitlin Clark with two minutes to go in the third quarter. And they couldn't basically do anything. Like they were completely inept. No, they, they, they don't have enough. Inept. Players. inept. Besides Kelsey Mitchell, Kelsey being able to create. Yeah, and that, and, and that one right there with her, I mean, the things that she does, she can be really, really, she can really be really, really amazing or really, really, really bad. It's one of the two. But they come, but so they, they Clark comes back in the, th- the start of the fourth. They bring in this girl, Dantes, who was a new, who came off the injured list. They, br- they bring her in. Why didn't she play early on? She doesn't play at all, but now all of a sudden in the fourth quarter, they throw her in the game. I, I'm watching Melissa Smith. Again, why was she not starting over Samuelson? They wanted to do some defensive thing. Bro, they couldn't stop these women for shit in the first quarter. Samuelson can't guard anybody. Clayton Clark turns it on. Clayton Clark at 15 in the fourth quarter. She finishes with 29, 13, five rebounds, five steals, and three blocks. That line, that stat line has never been done in the NBA or the WNBA. It don't mean shit, though. They lost. See how, folks, I'm objective? It doesn't mean shit because they lost. And you want to know what happened in that in that little stretch? That and one they took, they reversed. It was a three-point game in the final minute. You know what also happened in that situation? Um, Caitlin Clark, Kelsey Mitchell missed the free throw, and Caitlin Clark missed the free throw in the final five minutes of the game. So I'm watching this game as it's a three-point game. I'm like, these two just missed free throws, and this should be a one-point game. We'll come back and buy and they're both 90% free throw shooters. So these little things that happened, they made an amazing comeback. I mean, look, this was an example of what Caitlin Clark can do when Caitlin Clark is given the fucking ball and say, go. Do it. Just do. Just, play. Just do it. Just go. She turned a 22-point deficit into a three-point game, and they should have won that game. You got to take the whole cuffs off the ground. And that's what Christy said. I think at this point she was like, Christy, coach, I'm doing whatever the fuck I want. We're down 22. You can get back the fuck up. And she has to be like that from the beginning of the game, from when the moment starts. Like she has to be aggressive, oh, ultra aggressive from when the game starts. And that's the problem with their team. She comes out sometimes. She's a little bit pass heavy, and she's trying to get everybody involved. But it starts with her. I mean, <laughs> if she don't get going, that team don't get going, and, and it looks bad. If she comes out the game, that's why she's in the game. And they try to give her little breaks by giving her little spells and not having the ball. But when she doesn't have the ball, it looks bad. It, it's, it's just terrible to look at. Like, nobody else on the team could create besides Kelsey. Even Boston, she needs somebody to, to kind of get her going. If nobody gets her going, she looked like an average player. She doesn't look like the, the number one pick. She looked like, you know, the number 15th pick or ninth pick, whatever it goes, like second round pick. She doesn't look as astonishing as she does when her and um, and um, Aitlin got it going together. So, I mean, Caitlin tried to lead them back, but she has to be doing that from the beginning of the game, and it has to be like that nonstop. All the, and it frees up so, so much for that team when she's just jacking up shots. Even if she's missing, it frees up so much other players because the defense is literally running two or three players at her every time. So I see other people say that Asia Reese is getting doubled. I say, no, she's not. And they show me a, a clip of like three people around her for the rebound. I say, that's after, that's after the shot went up. And people are crashing to help for the fucking rebound. But that's that's a big difference, y'all. Y'all can't tell me that y'all don't see it. Like, and and that'd be a biggest problem with us and, and people that are not objective about the game. Y'all are not watching the game. Y'all are just looking at stat line. And, and this has became a, become a race war. I mean, at the end of the day, it's black versus white. Um, and that's what it, it, it's, that's what it's turned into. And I don't like it. Because we're not looking at, looking at the players objectively. We're just looking at the race. And if you're black, you're supporting Angel Reese. If you're white, you're supporting Caitlin Clark. And I'm just in the middle. Like, damn, I'm just watching basketball. They could have been purple for all, for all I give a fuck. I'm just telling y'all how I see it. And, you know, from, and I'm going from there. They're like, I'm agreeing with you on the post. I'm like, well, I'm agreeing with him because he's fucking right. And y'all want me to not agree with him because he's white and I'm black. And we, we, we're just supposed to go at it. And I'm supposed to support Angel Reese the whole time. No, I do. I love her. I love her motor. But at the end of the day, I think Caitlin Clark is better. I think somebody who's getting guarded differently than anybody else in the league, 85 feet, I think that that you have to that has to hold some type of freaking, you know, it, it has to be important to people to understand this, you know, the magnitude of what's going on when it comes to that situation. Man. When we when we started the podcast tonight, that was 39 minutes ago. We were at 1,075 subscribers. 
We are now at 1,112 subscribers. Thank you so much, people. We really appreciate it. Appreciate y'all, man. Seriously, this is genuine. We really appreciate that. That's so awesome. Like we're we're working really freaking hard to to build this up. We've been doing this now since end of January. Well, started beginning of January on Spotify. I don't even know if we post this stuff to Spotify anymore. Somebody asked me, somebody asked me the other day. They say, "Are y'all on Spotify?" I said, "Shit." I, I think that Don, I, I don't think Don's posted us to Spotify. By the way, Don just had to run because he is, he has a flight out of town to make some deals. Um, and he's actually going to Iowa to visit Kaylin Clark or her family, at least, as he mentioned. But so that's why he that's why he had to jump off. But yeah, seriously, we've been busting our ass here trying to put out some good stuff and. You know, it's a learning curve for us. We don't, you know, we don't, we didn't know what we didn't know. Like I couldn't, I, I didn't know how to edit a video when we first started. Dead serious. Like I had no idea. I'm, I'm 46 years old. I'm learning to do this stuff. Like I'm old school journalist. I have a degree in journalism. I'm old school journalist. I ran a website called inside the for 10 years with partners of mine um, on the 247 network. We started it before 247, but this has been an experience for all of us. You know, even to to the point where we're talking about the WNBA and watching, like really watching it, you know, and, and that's because of Caitlin Clark. I'm not going to sit here and pull punches. I'm watching it the way I'm watching because I, I enjoy watching her play. Yeah. I covered high school girls basketball for years for the Miami Herald. And I can tell you it was some of the worst crap ever. You're watching uncor. I mean, these young girls, these high school girls, are just completely uncoordinated, and these are considered the top players in the in the state, top some of the top players in the country. I'm sitting here watching this. I'm like, this is awful. Yeah. This is 1998 to about 2000. The main area when I covered when girls basketball was like 1998 to about 2010. Um, and, and so it there, there's been a massive difference in women's basketball. The talent has gotten a lot better. Hey. Hey, um, but I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just I just wanted to say something about like something from previous episodes about Caitlin Clark. Remember we was talking about it. We were like a lot of these women are jealous and, and mm-hmm. they're doing things that they shouldn't be doing and they should be embracing her and yeah. they're getting all these new eyes on the game. And when we come to the game, do your thing. And then we can see, you know, who we really like and who we really could support other than Caitlin Clark. But she's bringing the viewers and and then um, the person that I have like fell in love with watching her game has been Kennedy Carter, man. And that's what she's a whole, superstar. The whole thing I said from the She's a superstar, dude. And I was wrong. Remember but you you said who the hell is this? And I said She's a star. And I said, hey women, hey, take the viewership that she's bringing to the game. Don't hate on her. Don't get mad. And when y'all play, show us show us what you got. And then let us, you know, form our opinion from there, you know, and Kennedy Clark, Clark you know, Kennedy Carter, I call her Kennedy Clark. Kennedy Carter has been downright amazing. She's my second favorite player to watch in the league right now. Um, not Aja Wilson, it's not 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 Reese, is 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 not uh Tarasi. It's it's Kennedy Carter. She's so explosive, she's so fast. I call her a miniature fucking Allen Iverson. She's the Allen Iverson of the WNBA. She's explosive. She gets to anywhere in the point of the court where she wants to get. She could get her shot off on anybody. And she's small, she's miniature. And she's just damn right explosive and how she could just she could score any kind of way and she could go for twenty five any night. She's a fucking superstar. I love her game. I enjoy watching her. I'm definitely a fan. I don't know if I'm a fan enough to go get a damn jersey, but I'm definitely a fan of watching her game. Like when I turn on the game to see the Chicago, I'm not watching Reese. I'm actually watching because I like the way Kennedy Carter plays. Man, kudos to her, man. She's she's been amazing. Damn, she, she she's so fun to watch, man. So the video that we I posted the rant on on that on that Reese thing has now had is at seven thousand views. So thank you, that's huge. We appreciate it. I mean, that's crazy. And by the way, the likes to di- the likes the ninety it's ninety one point six percent likes to dislikes. And I'm telling you right now, it's it's people who know basketball know that what happened today is not right. They know. I don't care if your name. I don't. The biggest Angel Reese apologist knows that that's not real. Yeah, they know. They know. They can't. You can't sit here and say that it's real. And I would say that if right now Caitlin Clark is running a four-game points assists streak, she's got double doubles and points and assists four straight games. The points record for the WNBA. I don't care what nobody say. Points and assists is hard. Oh, oh, and why can and why can you say that, Nick? Please tell the because audience. I played, I played basketball for all my life. I played Division One basketball. 
to get somebody to create a basket and to get somebody else to score, that's harder to beat your defender, make somebody else help, and then kick it to that person. And that person has to make the shot or the bucket. You have to put them in a situ- situation to score the ball easily, like Caitlin Clark does a lot of these situations, getting people easy baskets. That's just downright harder than getting rebounds. I don't care what nobody tell me. There's 70, 100 shots that go up a game. There's 50, 60, 70 rebound opportunities. But assist opportunities are damn near rare. That's why it really happens, guys. It's, it's just really happening. But assists are definitely harder to get. I, I don't. If you play basketball, you understand that assists are harder I, to get. Especially when you're a big. It's, that's what you do. I mean, we've got point guards who are small who can't get assists. They can't create for other people. They can't break the beat to down. They can't get anybody else to come and help. You know, some people just let that person score. But... Caitlin Clark is so combustible that they, like, she has defenders. Everybody eyes up on her. You know when you say man and ball, you got to watch your man, you got to watch the ball. No, people are not even watching their man anymore. And a lot of people are getting backdoor cuts because Caitlin Clark draws so much attention. And then she's dumping people off. Even when her dribble is stopped, people are still not watching their man. And she's passing people on back cuts and they're getting layups. Guys, getting re- getting. Double doubles with assists is definitely hard, and I'm pretty sure if we look at the history of it, especially in the WNBA, we're going to see a lot less people getting double doubles with assists than people get double doubles with rebounds. And then double doubles happen all the time. Triple doubles don't. So I, I want to follow up with you on Kennedy Carter, um, real quick. Again, thank you guys. We're now up to 1120 subs. I don't know this this video with Angel Reese is going is is fire, and I and again 37 new subscribers from that video. We know the stats. We love it. We appreciate it. And look, this is who I am. Understand, this is who I am. This is who I've always been in sports. I am opinionated. I have opinions that go both ways. I can tell you right now, you know who I hate as a quarterback? Patrick Mahomes. Yes, I hate Patrick Mahomes. Can't stand him. Cannot stand him. But am I going to sit here and say that Patrick Mahomes is not the best quarterback in the NFL? No. No. He's absolutely the best quarterback in the NFL. Maybe I can't stand him because he doesn't play for the Dolphins. Because <laughs> he did. Because if he did, I'd love him. I'm not bullshitting you. I cannot stand. He, you know what buzzed me about Patrick Mahomes? He's just a fucking dork. I said it before, right? Remember the Fortnite gamer thing? I, I, I think he's a dweeb. And I'm probably so wrong. But he gives that persona. Yeah. Yeah. Like... You know who you would consider a cool guy when back in the day for basketball? Your boy, Latrell Sprewell. That's my guy. Allen Iverson. Yeah. Like those are you want like hip, cool. That's who you wanted to be like. That's, That's who you wanted to be. Mean. You don't want to be. Uh, I can't think of one right now. Troy uh, Aikman. Who? Troy Aikman. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Like, like, like Troy Aikman still looks like kind of a dork. Mm-hmm. Y- you know, whereas Tony Romo. Even though they didn't win, looks cool. Romo's cool. Like, he has that, he has a swag to him, man. He does. Like, so understand, I'm not a Patrick Mahomes fan, but I know how good Patrick Mahomes is. And I'm acknowledging that Angel Reese is doing some special shit. That don't mean you gotta like him. But I don't have to like her. I hate her persona. Her persona publicly. For basketball, this desire to be a villain, I'm not with it. I'm it's with unne- it. it's I'm unnecessary. With it. Huh? I'm with it. I'm, with it. I just, I'm not. I don't think it's necessary. I want her to follow through with it. That's my no. Opinion. But she doesn't want to. She wants to cry on the on the on 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 the in. She wants to cry and 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 boo hoo and all that bullshit. I'm not with it. I don't see the need for it. You can be competitors. I love it. You don't have to be the. It doesn't have to be good versus evil. Was this in 1981? I love it. All right. Well, that's we, we see it. We you. see it. Okay, but we see a division of people where basically, look, man, I, I, I can take a lot of comments, and I know I'm deviating because we're like we're kind of open today. As you noticed that we've changed up how we're doing the show. We're not really segmenting it uh, with Don's dimes, Rudy's rants, and all that shit. I'm doing Rudy's rants pretty much on the side as it's as its own. <laughs> And, and whenever, and, and has, like whenever I feel like it, because it, 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 it comes every bro, it comes every day right now. I said, Rudy, you posted. I just said, yeah. "Fuck it." I see a notification. 
Now you see why. Now you see why. It comes every day now. And, and, and so it takes me 10, 15 minutes. I don't need to have Nick jump on here with me. You know, we did see We do CFL. Nick is the man for CFL. He knows his crap inside and out. I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, can't pick for shit, but we'll see this week. It's we'll see this week. It, you know, you know, combat corner. We're working on credentialing for different events to go to cover these things live, uh, and it's been it's going to be worked out because I'm already talking to BKSC, talking to the, I'm talking to the PFL, um, Don's talking to the UFC. So we're we're doing some special stuff here. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, man. <laughs> when you tell me on a comment to burn my cross. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. Bluntly. To burn my cross. I don't know if you... And this was from an an older black man on Instagram. These are my kids. I don't know if you see what color they are, but they sure is fucking white. This is my fraternity. I pledged Phi Beta Sigma 27 years ago. This is not about race to me at all. Not one bit. It's not a race thing. I don't, I've never been a fan of the theatrics and the antics. Out, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave myself an out. Outside of the Miami Hurricanes in the 1980s. And how old was I back then? A kid. I coach kids. You know what I don't want to see them doing? Being pompous assholes on a basketball court, a football field, or a soccer field. I've had my kids, we, we win in soccer. We win. We've had three years in a row. We are 30, 1, and 3. We've lost one time in 34 games in three years. Blowing people out. We've won two championships. The one loss was in the championship three years ago. That shit hurt. Because we'd beaten that team. We were way better than that team. Just we ate shit that day. My son, who's 10 years old, nine at the time, we're up 8-1 in a soccer game. So it's over, right? Mm-hmm. It's like this bullshit. We score again, and my son with another player are doing like chest bumps and like theatrics and i had to snatch them i'm like don't do that don't do that we're up not well now we're up nine one what are you doing you celebrate like we did this is what we're supposed to do we're better than they are you don't have to rub it in their face and try to make them feel bad these are kids but you know what these kids get where the kids get this shit from this that you're too little. It, so and they get it from this. They don't get it from who they, they're not getting it from each other. Mm-hmm. The theatrics, they get it from this. And you're teaching children, pro athletes and co- college and pro athletes are teaching kids to be arrogant and obnoxious. So lack sport, huh? So so when do the parents take over and 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 watch their kids and, and, and set an example for their kids. They can't always be looking up to oh, parents are a problem. They can't always be looking up to these parents are parents are a problem. These players are professionals. They get paid to do this. So they it's it's a whole different experience when you're on that level and how they act is differently how kids should act. They, I, so I, I I'm I feel differently about it with professionals because you are getting paid to do this job. So if you get Well, Angel Reese wasn't right. a professional last year when she was doing two years ago. She was a college player. If you get your ass smacked on a professional level, you should be able to take it. And you should be, and, and the person that's winning should be able to give it. Now this, this is definitely a law, a line to be drawn. I I, I I agree. There's a line to be drawn. But the line is definitely different in the in the in the, in the professional ranks than it is from from you know eight, nine, ten year olds. And it's up to the parents to teach. Who the knowledge well, that. well, we can. That's that's a, that's that's an entirely different topic because teach or set this where, do, where do many of these kids come from? Where do many where do many of these kids come from? They come from a bad parent parental situation. They don't come from the best parental situations. They don't yeah. come. With, they come with from from single parent homes. The 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 the, the dad is not around. the dad's not around. 
And I'm not, and look, I'm not being any kind of way. I'm just, this is what it is. is what I covered is. high school sports for a long time. Keep it real. I'm a kid. Okay. Uh, let me give you a background on me a little bit. Cause my father was a lawyer. He was a judge. I'm giving a lot of information. I'm giving backstory on my life. My mother was a teacher. I have great, I have profound respect for teachers. Profound. Even when they, even when I, even as a kid, you know, no, as an adult, profound respect for teachers. Should be paid a whole lot more money. My father was a lawyer and a judge. I came from a, a, a married family. My parents got divorced when I was 24 years old, but I'm an adult at that point. And it still hurt like hell as a 24 year old man. The first time I met a kid who didn't have a father in the house, I think I was like nine. And I was like, where's your dad? Kids like, I don't know. And I, I'm nine. I'm like, I have no understanding of why this is what's going on. Mm -hmm. I'm nine years old. I don't know what. Why doesn't he have a dad? Like the, the thought of a nine-year-old, like as a nine-year-old thinking like, okay, this is one, I met another kid whose father was dead. Like the thought of my father being dead at, at nine it's different. was different. Like it was crazy to me. And now this other kid I know, and one, one of them was black and one of them was Filipino kid from and his father. The kid who was Filipino, his father had died. The kid who was black, that kid was my best friend for like 15 years, 20 years. You want to know that I never met his kid's father? 20 years. Never met his father. From the time I was nine years old to probably at my late 20s, we, we ended up falling out off some stuff, things that went, happened, and it's unfortunate. But I never met this guy's father. I was in his house all the time. Never saw his dad once. He grew up basically with a mom who was never home because she was working, doing the best she could. Yeah. And you can imagine what ended up of his life. I don't know where he is now. I know that he was going through some shit and that's part of the, you know, there were things that happened that, but these kids are coming from tough situations and they're, and they are the, these are the ones that are seeing what these older, these players are doing and they're mimicking it because their mama's not going to tell them shit different. No one else is saying, look, you don't do that. I mean, I remember watching videos when I'm watching Miami Northwestern coaches have fist fights with their players. Like that's insane. That would not happen today. Cause I mean, you, it's, everything's videotaped and the coach would probably get fired, but it was happening in the '90s and early 2000s, and it's on. There's a there's a there's a movie on it from Northwestern on Tori and Charles, a former Northwestern defensive defensive end who went to Florida. Like this is the stuff that go, that used to go on that goes on. I am just one of these people where my son loves Ronald Acuna. My younger son loves Ronald Acuna. I'm Hispanic. We're Latino in my family. My 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 son mother is black. My, my two older sons mother is black. I am Hispanic. My father's born in Cuba. My mother's Italian. So we're Latino, Italian, Black. We're a mixture of everything going on here. He loves Acuna. What is it known for Latino players in baseball, Nick? Arrogant. Yep. Swaggy. Swag. The ridiculous chains, like <laughs> flinging all over the fucking place. <laughs> so you know what I got my son? I got him a freaking diamond chain from Fashion Nova for $20. He wears that thing like that crap is worth $50,000. It's freaking turning white. <laughs> it, the gold is no longer gold. It is like a brown, whatever, yellow. I don't even know what color it is anymore. Yeah. But he wears that damn chain to play baseball and it's flinging the hell around. And I'm like, it's not what I thought about when I got it for him. Yeah. For fun. But he's doing it because of what, what he, for baseball play, because he loves Acuna. And you're like, I have to remind him. Ronald Acuna is a professional. Yeah. He's making a crap load of money. You're not him. You don't do that. You haven't earned that ability to be that way. Shouldn't be that way at all, in my opinion. But you haven't earned the ability to be freaking, yeah, look at me, motherfucker. <laughs> He's changed his batting stance five times in four months. Why? He's watching baseball players. He's messing up his damn hitting ability because he was hitting really well, and then he started messing with his stance too damn much. Thing is, when I look at Angel Reese, Angel Reese is a young black girl's lover. Cool. Cool. That's great. I love it. But they're also seeing the things that she does on the court, and they're going to emulate that too. They just are. 
That's the way we. That's the way kids are. And, and off the, the parents, court. huh? And off the court. And off the court. And off the court. So what are they going to do? They're going to dress in stuff that you probably don't want your daughter dressing in. I don't. I, I don't know. I, I know we're going off on a long tangent here, but I want people to understand when you certain comments that are written on our on our things. Are, are they're so racially freaking up? Obno- they're horrible. That's what this is turned into, though. I told you it, it's turned into it. And when you tell me to burn my cross, like, bro, man, this is my brother, man. This guy's the godfather to my kid. You think we're doing a podcast together? If he thinks I'm burning fucking crosses, like the KKK, like, are you guys crazy? And coming from an old, bl- an old black man, like, dude, bro, you should like, come on, dude. Yeah. Come on. Let me let me put my thing on the charger real quick, Rudy. What? My your, the mic? No. Nah. Oh, your phone? My computer. Your oh, your computer about to go dead. It's not like this is my brother. I've, I've known this. I've known Nick since he was fifteen years old. And he started me. If he was racist, he would never started me, guys. <laughs> I wouldn't have a travel team of nothing but black kids. I think I had one white kid on my travel team. And fr- sorry, no, three. I had three. I had three over six years on my travel teams. Three white kids. Rudy Buzzard, a six foot eight kid out of American Heritage. Uh, Johnny Miller, a, a guard out of American Heritage. Chris Sands out of Palmer Trinity. All my players were black kids. What are you talking about? So burn my cross. And some of these and some of these older black women say some fucking vile shit. It's crazy. It, it's it, it's like you, people get so damn tough behind a computer screen. And I can di- I can only imagine if once we get larger how we'll be. I won't even look at the shit no more. Yeah. But I still look at it. You 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 can always look at it. It's just I'm always going to look at it, but I won't respond to it the same way cuz I respond to stuff right now because I I you know I'm going to interact with you. Yeah. And there are some comments where we can get into dialogues and shit like that and I'm cool with that. But some of the comments are just like, "Bro, oh, I don't know basketball. No, I coached basketball. Covered basketball. I promise you I know more basketball than you think." And I don't, and I, and all I need is eyes to see certain things. Nick, this game today, Indiana. Let yep. me give you an example. And I'm gonna jump back into Kennedy Carter because you mentioned her. But Indiana today have they had two jump ball situations, and they don't get. I, I, they didn't get either of them. They didn't get either of them. And you know what makes it crazy is that you're sitting here like, when you have the bigger player in the NBA, that team almost always wins the jump ball. Mm-hmm. I was it's very, see, very, huh? I was dying to see Caitlin Clark in this situation. I hope she didn't pass it, bro. <laughs> oh, dude, the the they had they were down three. Yeah. At, did you see the ending of the game? They didn't get the rebound. They didn't get the rebound. They had the jump ball. Aaliyah Boston. How does Aaliyah, Aaliyah Boston wins the jump? But did you see how they're positioned? No, listen, Smith. They're not positioned properly. They, 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 she literally hit it to a spot in between. It was Clark on one side, Lexi Hull on the other, and you have an Indi- a, a, a Mystics player in between them. They did not create that space yeah. for Aaliyah Boston to, to tap it to. Yeah. Caitlin Clark should have been on the other side or Melissa Smith or somebody. You have to form that wedge. That you have wedge. to form that wedge. Yeah. And they did that twice in the last six minutes of the game. Coach yeah, that's what I say. Christy sides is what do they work on? Because they don't work on defense. Clearly, they don't work on help side. They don't work on anything defensively. They barely work on offense. I think they basically run the pick and roll fucking forty five times a day in, in 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 practice, probably at this point. But you don't work on situations like jump balls, and it happens twice, and they win the tip both times, and both times they don't get the ball because you're not positioned properly. That was a bad loss for me. Bad loss. It was a horrible Bad. loss. It was a horrible loss. Between that loss and the Chicago Sky loss, we're up 15. Those were horrendous losses. Now, look. I think Atlanta, both, Atlanta, has, Atlanta has fallen off. So Chicago bad. and Indiana are both going to make the playoffs. Yeah. They're both going to make the playoffs. Whether, what, you know what? It depends on who, if anyone gets hot. Chicago's record uh, schedule is way tougher than Indiana's down the stretch because Indiana played all these people in the first half of the season. There is a chance to get the six seed still with the Phoenix Mercury. That's the chance you have. You have a chance to jump into six. 
Because yeah. five is gone. Five is the aces, and they, they're moving they, on they, up. They're they're playing they, well they again. Got back, they got back on the road. Yeah, they got they got Chelsea Gray back, and they've been playing really really well. But your chances to get to six, right? And but the coaching, I don't know how this woman still has a job. Because if I'm watching that crap, I, I, there's nothing in there that makes me want to keep her as a coach. Because um, to not get two jump balls is crazy. To it's me. time to br- go get the Iowa the Iowa coach. Bring her over here. She's familiar with Caitlin Clark. It's about that time. Christy Sides has to go. You go get the Iowa coach. I forgot her name. I apologize. Oh, Lisa, Lisa Bluter. Yeah, I don't know if she retired because Caitlin Clark left her or, she, or is this already in the works? Is, is this already in the works for her to become the coach? I, I think it was in the works. I think it was a combination of this is the end of Caitlin Clark. I'm in my 60s. But is in the works for her to be the WNBA coach? Be, I don't be know. In a fever? I, I don't know. I'm I don't know. I, mean, I, I, think, I, think, I think it's becoming more possible when she's watching sense. this. It makes sense because – Obviously, her this Christy size thing. I mean, she kind of fell into the job, but it's, it's not working. It's, it's nothing about anything. They they don't look like they get any better, and they had a lot of time. They, I mean, they they have gotten better, but some of the things that they still do should not be. It shouldn't be still be mistakes shouldn't be happening like that, that that are happening. So they need it's just this time to to get a new coach next year, man. Figure it out. Um, let the season ride out. I mean. And it is, I mean, I would have fired her already. I'd have replaced her already. Before, but at this point, yeah. just let it ride out. When they were one and eight, she'd have been fired. If she was in the NBA, she'd have been fired at one and eight. Yeah. At one and eight, she'd been fired. They started off one and eight. I guess you could still do it right now because you got the whole the you, Olympic you, you, coming you, up. You, you could. I think you could do it. And she, but the thing is, they started off one and eight, and from that point until today, they were eight and five. Yeah. So they've been playing so the t- so the gap of different. time. So their practice time to work on the pick and roll has been very helpful to them getting better. I think these women are getting used to Caitlin Clark's passes. And that's the difference. Like, give me an example. Can you imagine it? You know why when we talk about the turnover number? Oh, my God. We're so, we, we point out the drop passes. We point them out for a reason. And we point them out because, can you imagine, first of all, people that handle the ball commit the most turnovers. They just do. Let's go the, James the, Harden. The year he averaged, LeBron James is the, has more turnovers than anyone in the history of basketball. James Harden, he, Russell Westbrook. He, he averaged six turnovers. And – and the typical number for a, a basketball player, you want a two to one ratio. Yeah, she's and and she will quite frankly be at a two to one ratio. If, um, she's in the league. She's in the league. The league in assists, man. She's going to be doing double digits every game. Two of her much. passes per game is is not on her. Two of her turnovers per game is not on her. So that puts her around three point five. Three, three to four. four. Five with yeah. eight assists, that puts her around two point two to one. Now, if you Chris Paul, that's different. That's four to oh, one. He was like he was three like five one. to one. Three to one, four to one. He, he was, was like five right. to one. Bro. Bro. Was, that's why they have called point guards, but point gods, my bad. That's why they call point god. But typically for a person who handled the ball a lot, you want it to be right around two point one. Like LeBron is usually around eight to four. Harden's around ten to five, you know, eleven to six that year. That's what he normally typical. Typical guards, people who have the ball are around. Luca is around the same thing. But so this whole turnover situation, if you really look at the game, you can't just say 5.5 or whatever it is because you really watch the game. At least 1.5 1. of them per game is not on her. So when y'all should bring this whole situation up, and now she's averaging 10, 11 assists a game, so when her numbers really flip, what are y'all going to say then? What are y'all going to say then when she's averaging 10, 11 assists per game with Four turnovers. Is that still too much? You know what you just did? You just did Jason Tatum. I just, oh, what are you going to say? What are they going to say now? What are, what are they going to say now? So what are they going to say then? <laughs> so, so when you talk about that, for example, the point guard thing, right? And I know we're, we're doing this. We're, like I said, we've changed our, our way we're doing things. Nick has the show. I have the show. So we're just, a lot of this stuff is now we're just talking. Because we, <laughs> we have, we have a couple of topics that we still have left that we're going to jump into before we're done. Um, but, when you look at this point guard situation, the reason we talk about the turnovers and the fact that the passes that she makes have been dropped, if she passes the ball out of bounds, that's a turnover. No problem. She had a couple today where I was just like, what are you doing? She's going to have those. She's going to have it. She's a daredevil. She, she takes chances. But when you drop layups, you drop passes that are going to be layups, first you lost an assist and you created a turnover. And the point. On top of that, can you imagine if they – the reason it's not talked about in the NBA people is because professional male basketball players don't drop passes. Yeah. They don't drop passes at this frequency level. 
No. They might now and again. Like if, if it hits them in the fingertip, I'm not blaming the, the, the receiver in, for Caitlin Clark. But when it hits them in both of their hands, sorry, that's on the receivers. That's a, that's the person yeah, catching usually, the ball. Usually in the NBA, when when it's turnovers, them not being on the same page or like yeah. LeBron's IQ yeah. is so high. So overthinking for somebody else who IQ was like matching his. So he's like, you should have cut. And they're like, well, shit, I'm right here. He's like, man, if you did this and that, you'd have had a lift. It's not from just simple, you know, drop passes. So their turnovers are a lot different than the WNBA. So think about if LeBron James was passing the ball in the WNBA. He'd have 10 turnovers a game or more. <laughs> He'd break their hands. And Caitlin Clark is like LeBron with the ball. She has – LeBron is one of the greatest passers in the history of the NBA. You see that thing called objectivity? I'm not a LeBron fan, but that man's passing skills are incredible. He makes passes that are out of this world, and he has that skill and power. I mean, he's so strong. But he breaks these women's hands. So the passes that he makes that are similar to Caitlin Clark in the men's game, who's on his team right now? Anthony Davis catches it and dunks it. He doesn't drop it. It's a dunk. When she passes it, it goes right through Kelsey Mitchell's hands, and it rolls out of bounds, and it's a turnover. So not only did she lose the damn assist, she got a turnover on top of that. That's why I pointed out, because it went on over and over and over and over and over again the in the first 15 games or so. Yeah, it's, it's, it's slowly going down. But the first 15 games, those eight turnover games, nine turnovers, ten turnovers, that's from that. That's from that. A lot of it was from that. If she, if you, I'm going to, at some point, I'm going to go back through every game and watch this and just, and just track it. Because I'm curious to know how many turnovers she's had because of it, but I know it's a lot. The same reason I know Angel Reese catches her own shot a lot yeah. on misses. It, it's, it's there. 40, yeah. you get layups being blocked 40 times and 185 shots and you're, you're shooting 41, 42%. You're missing a whole lot. And you lead the league in offensive boards by three. Yeah. Like, it's not like you have three offensive boards and the next person has 2.8. No, they, you have five and they have 2.5. Like, Asia Wilson is second in, in, in the rebounding. Because she, she doesn't makes, have, because she makes her shots. She makes her layups. She makes her layups. She shoots 50% from the field. If Angel Reese shoots 50% from the field, I promise to God, that offensive rebound number is going to drop in half. It'll probably be at like, it'll, shit, it'll be two. Like it'll be two. Game. She might average 10. I'm talking about the offensive boards alone. No, 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 She's no. averaging. So that it's going up. That it's going up. Nine. Nine, ten. Here's, but, and we, we've also discounted the fact that Camila Cardoso matters. She matters. She She's up. not. She takes she up takes space. Up space yeah. She takes up bodies. So we're so quick to like – people have forgotten that Cardoso didn't play the first five or six games. And those are the first five or six games where Reese wasn't having double-digit rebounding games. So these things matter. All these things play together. Again, I am not taking anything away from what she's done. She's been great. But when we're talking about this rookie of the year shit, this isn't even a race. This is not a race to me. It still isn't. I, you can't go 29, 13, 5, 5, and 3. The only time this ever happened, and now, now, now you know, everyone makes up these things now. First time ever, first time ever, first time this. They're going to keep doing it. Because right now, Caitlin Clark's got four straight triple, double, double games, points and assists. Like Nick said, assists are way harder. And the record of the WNBA is six. I'd be shocked if she didn't break it. She's what, five out of the last six, though, right? She's five of six games with, with double, digit, double digit assists and points. Five of six. Six in a row is the record. She's second now all time. Sue Bird didn't do this. Sue Bird didn't do this. Courtney Vandersloot holds the record. And Courtney Vandersloot also did a couple times, four times in a row as well. But let me get back to Kennedy Carter. Kennedy Carter is fantastic. Kennedy Carter, hey, man, realistically, we wouldn't know who Kennedy Carter was if she didn't elbow, elbow <laughs> block Caitlin Clark in that game. We wouldn't have any fucking idea who she was. And you know what? She did exactly what she needed to do to get known. And you know what? I go back and I look at it. I'm like, maybe it was calculated. She, maybe it was. Because after that, she has shown. Oh, that girl is in. She's, she doesn't have shooting range. And that's the problem, right? And I'm not saying it's a problem from my perspective because I love mid-range basketball. You know that. 
But why are that? Why did we not know about her? Well, she's crazy for number one. <laughs> she's fought, fighting her teammates in previous locations. She's lost her. She's been basically kicked off of two WNBA she's teams. Fire, she's a fireball on and off the court from what we, you know, from what we hear. Off the court. I mean, she's been fired off of two teams. Um, they got rid of her because she was a problem. She was out of the league last year. Teresa Weatherspoon. Hold on. Hold on. What? So you know she had to be that bad off the court because oh if you watch God. her on the court and the talent she had. And then I saw a clip when she played against – did you see the clip when she played against the Team USA, against Sue no. Bird and Tarasi, though? Oh, no. my God. She dropped like 30 out of their Texas a and They played te- Texas a and she dropped like mm-hmm. 30 out of their 60 points, and she's just giving all of them everything they can handle. And Sue Bird and, and, and Tarasi, they're doing like a podcast, and so they're talking about that situation. they like, man, they had me guarded. And, and she was just the truth. So that's how you know that it was her attitude, because there's no way with her talent that she should have been out of the league. She had to be so bad. So fucking bad. Like, so good. You had, to be, you had to be so bad. For for two teams, it was the Sparks. Who was her first team? I don't she, even know. She got trapped. She was with the Sparks, and she was with um, Penny Carter. She was drafted by. She was drafted for. Uh, she was drafted by the Atlanta Dream. So the Atlanta Dream was the first one. You think the Atlanta Dream could use her right now? Yes. Oh God. 2020, the fourth pick in the draft. This was this was a long ago. She played two years there. She then went to the Sparks for a year. Didn't last there. And then she's been in Bursa, Burks, whatever the hell, in the Hell Lijong Dragons. It looks like she was in China or in, I don't know where the hell Bursa is. That's Turkey. So she went to Turkey. She's played in, in where the hell is this? She's been in Turkey a lot. You have a 17 as a rookie. <laughs> Polish, she's been Poland. Yeah, now, and look, Teresa Weatherspoon ha- has connected with her um, on, a, on a high level that has really entrusted Kennedy Carter trusts her. I, I don't know that Kennedy Carter can play for anyone else. <laughs> she won't ever want to. But holy shit, from that time, she is a firecracker, man. And on the court, she is so damn fast. She is physical. She's strong. She's aggressive. She gets to her spot. You can't do anything she, like about it. like. She, there's not a damn thing you can do about it. And like, she had 33 the other day in Seattle. Like, she's averaging right now 16-5. She's their leading scorer. And she started off on the bench. And she was on the bench when the season started. 16-5. But see, I want people to understand something real quick. Look at this. So she's averaging 16.5, 2.9 rebounds, 2.7 assists. Caitlin Clark's averaging 16, 7.5, and, and 6. That should give you an idea how good Caitlin Clark is. Now, Kennedy Carter's shooting 53% from the field. That is rare for women. It's she, but she's 20% from three. She can't shoot. She's not a perimeter shooter. She's in mid-range. She gets to the basket. <clears throat> She's had the last five games. Today she had 19, I think it was. Mm-hmm. She had 19. She had 21 against Seattle, 33, 26, 15, 20. Those are her last six games. I, I She's the best player on that team. And people – She's the best. She is the best player on that team, and that's another reason why, to me, it's not even a conversation as to who the rookie of the year is, because there's no doubt. Kate, there's no doubt who the best player on the Indiana Fever is. There's not even a conversation. If you don't think that Kennedy Carter is the best player on the on the Chicago Sky, it's debatable. It's a conversation to be had. I'm watching her. She's unbelievable. She's the best player on that team. She's their best player. Now, and, and now Reese is the igniter. <clears throat> she's the yeah. She's gonna bring. But Kennedy Carter has a is a firecracker too. Like they're both like they 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 mesh off each other well. I, I I tell you right now, I would love to see practices with those women. I I can imagine that they might get into fights. <laughs> like like there's some fire in there. 
And think about the fact that the season started and she played 14 minutes, 15 minutes, 17 minutes. So she had four points, 12, 12, 11, 12, 15 minutes. Then she played 20. She had 14. Then when she started getting the, then her first game versus Indiana, she had 19. Um, then 16, 25. Atlanta, she had a real bad game with four. She only took five shots back to 15 minutes. I guess maybe they sent her back to the bench. I'm not sure. 10, and then it's 16, 18, 19, 23, 20, 15, 26, 33. Like, this girl's a fucking baller. She's a ball player. And we now know who she is. And we all see her. And that's all I was saying. We see her. We see you. We see you. We see you. We see you. And that's what Nick said. Take advantage of the opportunity when you're playing this chick because when you're playing her, you have the opportunity to become known. And maybe it took a forearm to the back to get known, but you are known and you are seen. I don't know how she's not an all-star. I don't know how. She came on late. She was a star. They should have put her on that damn team. She's an all-star. Because you know what's also happened is that Nafisa Collar is hurt from the Minnesota Lynx. She's not going to be on the Olympic team. She won't play. She's not. She's hurt. She's out with a plantar fasciitis issue. You know how bad that is in basketball. Mm -hmm. You're out for, she's indefinitely out. I'm waiting to see if they're going to put Caitlin Clark on the Olympic team now. Come on. I don't know. Are they going to? I don't know anymore. I don't know what they're going to do because to me, the decision should have already been made. But how, how, and I'll be real. Angel Reese should be in that fucking team too. And I'm tired of people saying the same bullshit. When you, when Gil's arena, I watch this shit and they're like, well, who do you pull off? I don't care who you pull off. Long I do Asian. not care who you pull off. You can pull off anybody. Except for Asian. Yeah. You can pull any guard off that roster. Yeah. You can pull any other forward off that roster. I would probably leave her and I'd leave Alyssa Thomas. Yeah. Um, I bet Alyssa Thomas, who cares? Get rid of her too. Uh, there, you can pull off anybody besides Asia Wilson. And you could put Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese on that team. I don't want to hear that how they earned it. First of all, Chelsea Gray shouldn't be on the team. She's missed a, a year. She missed a year. She just got back. She shouldn't be on the team to begin with. Your criteria is all over the fucking place. Because your criteria said you need to be at this tryout, and she wasn't there. She was hurt. Brittany Griner was hurt. She missed the first double-digit games this season. Now, mind you, Griner is Griner. She's huge, and she the size and all that stuff. But you can pull anybody off this fucking team and put those two women on this team, without a doubt in my mind. It's not even a question about wh- why you're not doing. You need a first of all, Kylie needs to be replaced. She's hurt. You're not going to go out with an injured player. It's like Kawhi Leonard just bailed out because he's still messed up. I thought that didn't make that didn't make any sense. <laughs> I don't even know why he showed up. Um, but yeah, Kennedy Carter's incredible, man. I, I I am so impressed by her game. She is so fucking good. That's when people say, when, like, that's why it would bother me so much when Monica McNutt gets on there and talks about talent levels. You kidding? Talent levels? The Chicago Sky talent? Kennedy Carter would be the second best player on the Indiana Fever right now. And you know how open she might average 40 on that team. I'm not, I'm kidding. She's averaging 16 5 right now. She shoots 53% from the field. Ooh. Playing next to Caitlin Clark. She'd be averaging 25. I love some Kennedy. I love her. I love her. She'd average 25. And you know who would also probably be averaging 25, 30? Caitlin Clark. Well, they'll play off each other well. Oh, my God. They would play off each other so well. My God. It would, it would be, it would be, Jesus. But, but she couldn't play for Christie's size. <laughs> She'd probably beat the shit at Christie's size in practice. <laughs> well, her. She probably cool. choked the hell out of Christie's sides. I, I, she was 15 for 24 against Seattle. 62.5%. She took no three points. All two point shots. All two point shots. Three for five from the line. It was a girl who was sitting in the paint and she still made her way to the paint and finished on her. She's so, she's good, on man. On the same side of the basket. She didn't even have three points. Yeah. She's so good. And, and, you know, that's why I said, like, folks, bro. We we will talk about this because this is actually we, Caitlin Clark's made us watch this shit. So now we're seeing some other players. I'm not. I have not been impressed by really anybody else except for Kennedy Clark. Real shit. Like I watched Jewel Lloyd. Not impressed. It, awful to watch. Kelsey Plum looks good against Indiana because they can't defend a parked car. Um, 
overall, though, Arika Ogunbowale does not impress me. I don't know if you've ever seen her play. She just shoots the ball. Serena's the okay. I like Sabrina. Serena's good, but she's also the third best player on their team. Or She's not even the number one option. Like, that's the thing that kills me. It's like, I don't want to hear about how good someone is when they're not the number one option on that team. That's what kills me. Because they, they, they say, oh, well, she's doing this. Well, she's not being guarded the same way. She's not being guarded the same way. I watched, and I have a couple of other uh, rants that I recorded that I haven't posted yet because we had some technical difficulties and I'm waiting for them to get fixed. But uh, here's the first ESPN female commentator to say something positive about Caitlin Clark, and it was L. Duncan. And a month ago, she was ripping the shit out of Charles Barkley for the things he said about women's basketball. And recently said, she is the rookie of the year right now. Like, what she's doing is amazing. And she says, yeah, well, the race is close. I still don't think the race is close. I will never subscribe to that nonsense because I am watching the nuances of basketball and the race is not close. It might be close because it's closer. It's not, I think it was so big. Before. Oh, closer than yeah, closer than a than a landslide, but but not close. If 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 McNutt, here's the thing: if Monica McNutt, Carolyn Peck, Chinya Gumbuke, Drea Carter, all were on TV saying, "Caitlin Clark's a rookie there," this isn't even a conversation. Oh yeah, he won the round. No, he did not win the round. He got outlanded twenty to five. Sorry, the rounds before were 30 to 5. Yeah. This time he got landed 20 to 5. He still lost the round. Yeah. It didn't change this. The, it, it's a little closer, but it, but it didn't change anything. And yes, Angel Reese has made this a conversation. Definitely. But the conversation is with the double double thing, you better throw that in the trash can now. That's if, I hear, if I hear 25 straight double doubles after this shit, I'm going to be sick. I'm going to be sick. You're going like, to hear it. How... Hmm? You're going to hear it. I know we're going to hear it. I mean, I'm looking at it right now as the numbers skyrocket on this video. I'm flabbergasted. Right now, we are at, I posted this video, what, six? 15,000 views. Remember, we're a small podcast with 1,000 subscribers. We've added 81 subscribers off this. We're now at 1163 <laughs> off of this video since like 630. It's pretty, it's, it's rather amazing to me. I didn't think it would do this well, but it, it, yeah, man, I have mad respect for Kennedy Carter. I think she's a great, great player. I have respect for Angel Reese. I think she's becoming a really good player. I still hate her offensive game. I'm going to say it until I see something change. Don't tell me. I had one person tell me she has a great post game. No, stop it. Cut it up. Post game, she has no drop step. She has no up and under. She has no baby hook. She has no post moves. Every time it her po- goes up, it looks like this. Her, her, her post game is get to, the, get to the paint as quickly as possible, beat them there, turn around, get them under the basket, okay. catch the ball, and then throw it from my hip to the basket. Hope it goes in. If it doesn't, hope it win, goes in. It doesn't hope I can grab my own rebound. I'm going to go get it because I am faster, <laughs> quicker, more explosive. Well, at least get to the ball. I know where it's going to go because I threw it over there. I'm going to go get it, and then I'm going to put it back in. One of these shots are going to go in. You, yeah. know, you give me two or three opportunities, I'm going to make one. I shoot 38%, so that means eventually it's going to go 40%. <laughs> eventually, one of them is going to go in at this rate. It's a and, now, and now I got that big horse next to me, and that horse, if she misses, I'm going to catch her shot. Because she's going to miss that. Because she's going to miss, too, and she has two people draped on her ass. She's big Card- as hell. Cardoso probably miss more than this in weeks. That's like why open like by herself. I'm curious now. Let me look. Let's see what's going on here. Sorry, don't say don't shoot over forty five percent. She's shooting forty four point three percent. She she was two. She's three for seven, four for nine, three for nine, one for nine. For her, she's like right there. Oh, oh, here we go. This is another example. Cardoso that game against the Minnesota Lynx was one for nine from the field. She's on eleven point one percent. She had 10 rebounds, six offensive boards. Yeah. Just catch her own fucking shot. Well, she catches the Angels, so. Oh, she's probably catching her. She missed eight layups. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's, she, she's right there. So she threw it to the crack of the rim. She grabbed it back. <laughs> the it bottom there. of the rim. And she, she, she grabbed it back, and she threw it there again. <laughs> and she threw it there again. She's averaging, she's averaging 8.2 points and 7.8 rebounds. Okay. That's a difference for them. It makes a difference. So they're big. they're big as hell up front. I mean, that's their that's their game. 
they're big as hell. That, that, they have a big front line. They can't shoot, mm-hmm. and yet they, they they only shoot like 10, 15 threes a game. They no, can't. their team can't. Their team can't shoot. The only person that can shoot it relatively decently is Mabry, and Mabry mm-hmm. doesn't shoot that great. Mm-hmm. So, anyhow, yeah, Caitlin Clark busted a big game today, but it's off or not, um, and they left it on the table. And Christy Size is still a piece of fucking doo doo. And until they fix that situation, they will never get, get the next coach, man. I'm, I'm done with it. Get Iowa coach. Get her over here. Get it done. Get it done. Make it happen. Get it done. Mm-hmm. So that's about it for this segment because we can go on and on. Yeah. We're going to jump into somebody that we haven't talked about. We're an hour and a half in. Hey, man, it's all good. But we're about to jump into this topic here that, bro, the football season's coming. Hey. Football is coming, and you know that there's going to, especially college football. I hey. like I'm a I'm a college football fan. They finally bringing the NCAA football game back out after years and years and years. Really? A lot of oh, men wow. about to be, they come out on the 15th. A lot of men is about to be in their house getting the franchise and dynasty mode on all day long. Their wives. It's going to be my generation of people that's going to be playing this game all day long. I don't think these I, kids understand. But when we grew up, when we were 17, 16, 18. Bring the mic closer. I don't think people understand when we were 17, 18, 18, 17, 19, 20 years old, how impactful this game was to us, how long we sat there and played and, and, and devised the team. And, and I was in these, in these kids' home and telling them they're going to start for me, lying my ass off just like Deion Sanders do right now and most of these college coaches still do right now. But that's how we were doing it all day long. You get this four star to your team who runs a four two who who say he plays safety, you put him at the end, you put him at linebacker, and you change your school program from being a, a three star program to being a five star program. And now you get all the top recruits to I don't think they understand the magnitude of NCAA football college of playing this video game, man. You had to really build your roster, your team, man. And it took all day long. And then they added the mode where you could play with your friends and they could join the dynasty mode with you. And they're recruiting and you're recruiting against them. And we're all lying to the same recruit that they're going to come and play for us. Man, this was a great time, man. A great time to be alive. So shout out to everybody that's 40 years old, 42, 35. You're not 40 or 42 or 45. I'm telling you about this the generation that I'm from, 35 to the, the, the generation of 32 year olds to what year uh, were you born? 88. You're genera- you're a millennial. Yeah, the millennials. I, they're about, I, I, they're, they're I'm 45. 46. I'm not a millennial. Whatever, Rudy. You get I'm a millennial. Saying. You get the drift. You, you get you get into old 50 year old guys that should be like living in their mom's basement, right? They're gonna be there. They might. Y'all damn video game dorks, man. They I might be back gosh. in the basement this week playing that Jesus video game. Christ. I, I I haven't played a video game. I mean, I've played my kids a couple times. I think I'm like, I, 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 I think can't I'm play. Tired, but um, I I, can't, I remember when you played me in 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 a hotel. I think it was a Howard Johnson in yeah, Disney. I'm sure and you were up like fucking sixty to nothing at halftime. One of the best video game players. The and I was like, I can't play this bullshit no more. Yeah. Like this was so bad. And that was when I was like twenty eight. Yeah. Like I was like twenty eight. This was PlayStation Two, I think it was. Yeah. yeah. I played PlayStation One, <laughs> PlayStation Two or Three, whatever that was. I think it was PlayStation Two. two. That was a different system. Mm-hmm. That was way different because I played PlayStation One in college. I mean, that's part of the reason I didn't do too well during that sem- those two semesters at, 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 Florida, at Florida State. Hey. We'd, be play- we'd be playing um, NFL football till like five o'clock in the morning, Rudy, I, nonstop. Just nonstop. Man, that and was, if you lost, and if you lost, you might not see it again until the next day. Rudy, that was me my um, freshman year, man. I go out there to my 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 friend room was upstairs. That's when the Xbox 360 come out. But everybody was playing. Um, that was we were playing a lot NBA Live at this point. So I go up there mm-hmm. and like, hey man, we gotta go to class. He's like, no, nah, just one more game. Next thing you know, ten hours later, I don't miss class, he missed class. And next thing you know, I got a one point five my first semester at school because You were I, eligible? Yeah, I, my grades were terrible, but But you were eligible at one point five? I didn't play my my freshman year because of clearing house purposes. Oh, uh, okay. So the next year at one point five. My grades up and I was I was eligible to play. And after that I was like a three point oh student, but before that, hey. <laughs> hey, that that NBA live, that NBA live failed a lot of students, man. Oh my god! 
Yeah, no, I I was guilty of playing NFL football. Like that was that was a bad situation for me. But we're gonna talk about this Shador Sanders comment. You know, Shador Sanders was interviewed today, or what? Maybe it was yesterday, but. He says that we are everyone's Super Bowl. This guy, this guy, he and Sabrina Ionescu must be hanging out. Because she said that Caitlin Clark playing her was Clark's Super Bowl. And we all know that Sabrina playing Clark is really Sabrina's Super Bowl with how they defend her 94 feet. Shador Sanders. Sidor and Prime are the gift that's going to keep on giving for four months. Has this man not educated his son yet on common sense? I mean, but you got, you got to look at the bravado that Dion has. It's trickled down to his kids. He, he, Dion was on 11 and 1 Florida State teams. They were 4 and 8 yeah. last year. Yeah. They lost. Seven of their last eight games, they were the second most penalized team in the country. Mm -hmm. They had no running game to the point where all of their running backs decided to transfer. Shador holds the ball way too long. And this man is going to get on a microphone and say, in all the things that he said, nothing was wrong until he says, yeah, you know, we're everyone's Super Bowl, bro. And then he says, we, you know, when, when, when that's what I've been saying since we, we were on HBCU at Jackson State. You're not we were it. undefeated in the SWAC. You're not like, well, it. you weren't undefeated in HBCUs because you lost the Celebration Bowl twice to the MEAC. So you were not an undefeated HBCU team. And everyone knows that your team was fucking stacked, loaded in comparison to everybody else. And you lost the Celebration Bowl twice as a favorite, a big favorite, no doubt. And you're four and eight last year. Your team was trash. And you're jumping on here talking about you're everyone's Super Bowl. No, yeah. You know what? No, every team wants to kick the shit out of you because of your mouth. They want to kick your ass because of your mouth. Not because they think you're that good or they think your team is that good. Yes, there's explosion on your offense because of the way. Football's played today, period. You guys can score points, but you can't run the ball. And unless you show a running game, y'all will be four and eight again. Their best, I think their cap is six and six. I know you think you said eight and four. Eight and four. I, I think their cap is six and six. But if they can't run the ball, they're going to go four and eight again. That's what they'll be. They play North Dakota State to start the season. Deion Sanders actually said uh, today, North Dakota State is good. Every year. Every, North Dakota State is one of the best Division I AA programs Every in the country. Year. Every year. They've won countless national championships. They don't give a fuck. They will have no fear of Colorado. I think this was a very, very dangerous game. I don't know if Deion was joking or not, but he's like, I don't know why he scheduled this to start off the season. Give me a layup. I think he was serious. I don't think he was joking. I think he was dead ass serious. If you lose to North Dakota State on your home field to open the season, it ain't going to get better. I don't know. North Dakota State's pretty good. They're still Division One AA. If you lose to North Dakota State to bad. start the season, yeah, when you're talking about you're a Heisman Trophy candidate and you're a, a, a top five draft pick in, in the NFL next year, it, he's not. But they've trying to convince, they're trying to convince us like they're trying to convince us about Bronny James. Um, hey, Bronny James was a top 10 draft pick coming out of high school. Early yeah. on, before the whole yeah. heart surgery, the heart condition situation, he was. He was three and, over, over two tra summer league games, he was 3-12 and 12 with seven what points. He was, what, 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 what analysts were saying were, were drafts. Yes. No, he was not. Yeah. And, 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 and you know the comedy of that was? And we're going to go on a tangent now. On a draft we're going to go on a tangent now. Top 10 pick. No, he wasn't. Yeah, idiots were saying that. That not that wasn't real. No, it, it wasn't was real. People, there were real scouts saying that. Real idiots. Yeah, real idiots. Yeah, I know. People that don't know what they're talking about. Let's go back to the studio. 
I know what people were saying because they were all being paid by LeBron. I know what what happened. I still know. I still know what happened. Here's the funny shit about that LeBron shit. I'm jumping on a ta- I'm jumping on a tangent now because I might as well. After that, an opening debacle he had in the first game, um, against whoever the fuck they played. That's the Kings in their first game, their summer league game. Yeah. LeBron jumps. See, LeBron has to shut the fuck up. Like you can no longer speak on behalf of your child. Right. You have changed the dynamic. He's still his child. He is a professional basketball player who is his who's child? making eight million dollars over child? four years. No, I don't give a fuck. So can not Griffey, talk. So King Griffey Sr. couldn't talk about Craig Griffey Jr. Fuck no. Why? That was his first son. of all. First of all. First of all, you you do know baseball, right? Yeah. No, you don't. Ken Griffey Jr. was number one draft pick in America. Ken Griffey Jr. was a prodigy. There was not a doubt about how good Ken Griffey Jr. was. Ken Griffey Jr. was better than Ken Griffey Sr. That is not the case. Yeah. Ken Griffey Jr. was the best baseball player in the world. He was better than his dad. This isn't the same situation. It's never going to be the same situation. But you cannot. Your son's a professional now. You cannot get on the microphone while he's in summer league and start talking about him and saying, you know, I get more upset about this than he does. He just brushes it off. He doesn't give a fuck. Okay. Well, if he doesn't give a fuck, then you need to not give a fuck. He you can. need to stay the fuck. Yes, you can. You That's his re- his response to anything involving his son going forward, right now specifically, has to be professional. Has has to be. Let me see. My, is my mic right? Is my mic right? Yeah, okay. His response right now to everything involving Bronny at this moment in time while he's in summer league should be no comment. It should be no comment. This isn't a conversation for me to be involved in. You're what you're covering him play. You're watching him play. You you cover him. You cannot be defender of your child. He's a pro. I'm sorry. What at what point? So what hold on. Hold on. He's a pro. He, also, he also is his teammate. So if you want to put it in that perspective, have you ever? He doesn't like, answer questions about Austin. Defend, you can't defend your teammate. He's not defending his teammate. He's defending his son. No, he's There's defending a difference. his teammate. You don't, defend, why, you why, doesn't, doesn't, why isn't he defending Dalton Connect? He is defending Dalton. No, he wasn't. Yeah. No, he wasn't. He's I watched the, the interview. Why isn't he defending the tenth guy on the fucking summer league roster? Because he's not going to be on the real roster. Oh, uh, uh, exactly. And Le- right and, right and now, the real, be on the real right roster. Right now, well, you said he's going to the G League. You said that. Well, uh, he'll be there. Well, he's he's, he's, he's going to get a little time down there. He's going to play some he games. Ain't going, he ain't going to the G League. He's never gonna see, he'll never see the G League. He'll never see the G League. I'm saying this, and this is, this is all I'm saying. You need to let this kid be a player. Let him play. Why is my mic's volume so off? I can hear you. You fine? No, it's a, it's like really loud. It looks like it. Um, let him be a player. He had his first game. It didn't look good. Okay, move on. But you saying, "Well, Brian doesn't give a fuck." I'm his father, so I, you know, I care so much. I, you know, I wouldn't be able to do what he does. I wouldn't be able to hold my tongue. Like, yeah, you know what? You grew up broke. You grew up poor. He grew up rich. He grew up a millionaire. He's already a millionaire before playing basketball. He plays video games and gets paid a fuckload of money. I know this what my kids told me. He's a, on, uh, what is that, Twitch? Yeah. Yeah, he does that. My kids told me. My kids play video games. Like, he makes a boatload of money on that. He had an NI deal worth over $5 million. Like, what are we talking about here? He's a pro. Let him fucking go and let him play. But you comment. I, I, I hope we don't see him commenting every fucking game about Bronny because it's going to get real old real fast. It's yeah, already brother. old. You got him in the league. Let him go. Let him be. I'm not saying he ain't your son. You're gonna fucking take care of him, obviously. But with the but this shit, if, if I'm Bronny, I don't want my dad answering questions about me every day. It would bug me. Dude, that's, that's that the, would bug me. Would it bug you, Nick? That's the situation they're in, man. No, I mean, it's not. It's because LeBron makes that the situation. It's it's gonna be the situation. He's gonna no, it won't. Question, if you're they're, gonna ask, they're gonna ask him that question all the time. No comment. Every time. Are you, are, are you are you are you gonna sit here and tell me? Are you gonna sit here and tell me? You're not that, proud. You that, can't be that, a proud that, dad sometimes. Are you gonna sit, are you gonna sit here and tell me that the public relations team, media relations team for the Los Angeles Lakers, can't tell the media beforehand? Do not ask him any questions about Bronny. They can. They can, and they can end the interview. He wants to answer. 
He likes it. He always wants the show to be about him. That's what it is. He wants the, the attention. He wants it to be about him. He doesn't want it to be about Bronny. It's about him. This whole thing is about him. Yeah, it always has him. been. Huh? Now, yeah, playing with his son. Yeah, It's definitely. always been about him. So now I'm going to answer questions. Most players would not want to answer these types of questions. LeBron hey, this is wants a, to. This is a special moment. He get to play with his well, son. Well, the special, special moment, his son looked like trash the first two summer league games. But here's where I – No, no, no he didn't look like so trash here, today. He looked like I trash. actually watched it. I know, he, and I watched it too. He was garbage in the first game. He didn't look and trash. I didn't see – I didn't see – he was garbage. Today. He, yeah. I said today. He, he didn't look He trash. was – you saw him today? He scored yeah. three points today. I actually was, watched it. No, it was, yeah. So his three points and three – five rebounds? Okay. It, it, it wasn't like – he didn't get opportunities like that on off- on the offensive end. A lot of people is out there just doing their own thing, trying to like score and you know and show what they got. But like, I mean, he, he played solid defense. What I was asking for him to do, he got you know got his hands on some balls, got a couple of blocks. He was he was a solid. Player. I love you, man. I-, I love you, bro. But let me ask you this real question. By the way, we are up at a hundred new subscribers from this Angel Reese video. Holy shit. Almost 1,200, we're at 17,000 plus views. 962 watch hours. <laughs> That's crazy. Thank you, people. I'm going to keep saying thank you because this is amazing. This, this, is, this stuff makes my skin tingle. Like, this is like goosebump thing. Go ahead. He said in that interview, it doesn't matter how many points you score in Summer League. You know who says that? The people, and, and I know Jared, I saw Jared Dudley said that the other day mm-hmm. as well. You'll see guys that score 30 that won't be on a team, and you'll see yeah. guys that score five that'll be on a team. Fine. Yeah. yeah. You know who looks fantastic in Summer League? Zach Eady. Zach Eady is going to be the rookie of the year. He's already the favorite for rookie of the year. You're seeing an impact immediately. Him and Wemby will be fun. <laughs> it's t- two tall ass dudes. But where I was going with this is this. The kid from the Kings, who was a kid, he's a grown man, he's 26 years old, who lit up the Lakers in that summer league game. He should be on a team somewhere. I'd be shocked if LeBron wasn't calling for him right now because that guy can play right now. He might. Of course he will. He doesn't have to drive very far. It's only like a five-hour drive. (laughs) But if Bronny had bust out 30 in that first game. Oh, my God. What LeBron James has said. It doesn't matter how many points they score. No, he wouldn't have said that. Absolutely not. But that's when you get to brag on your son. It's a whole different. It's a whole different feeling. But you can still take the. You can. Still... <laughs> he would have said, "What are they gonna say now?" <laughs> what are they gonna say now? Rudy wrote. Rudy Rodriguez. What, what are they going to say, say now? What are they going to say now, Rudy Rodriguez? I don't, think, I don't think Bronny James has ever had 30 points in a game in his high school career. So I'm just saying, imagine, I'm not sure, I don't think he ever did, but I could be wrong. But imagine if he had 30. If he had 30, all that rhetoric and nonsense about how it doesn't matter how many points he scores, you he would have been blowing the world up. He, he, there's a video of him watching the game on his phone saying that's tough that's for tough. the one layup he <laughs> made for a layup. He made a layup. I'm not going to lie. I saw that. I said, all right, LeBron. Now, the, the one that was tough was the step back. <laughs> the step back, Jay, was a nice shot. That was nice a nice shot. shot. Nice, nice shot. shot. If you would have said that for that shot, I'm like, yeah, that one was layup. tough. That was, that was NBA worthy. That was, that was a great shot. Great. Yeah, uh, he created separation. You see, guys, I'm objective. I can go both ways and say that was a nice shot. Go yeah, ahead. That was a nice shot. I'll give but it a nice. layup. The layup one. <laughs> they re- Nick, they had it on the front page of ESPN.com. His layup. I mean, he's the he's he's what people are coming to see. In the can they stop? Right? See, see, can they stop? Can they just let the kid go? Let him be. Can they let no, him be? Goes, I'll let him be. So you want to know how? You know how I'll let him be? Imagine, imagine if they let him be. Imagine Michael Jordan's son coming and in, in, in being in the NBA. Michael Jordan's son played college basketball. He was better than Bronny in college. And Imagine him, in the him going to the NBA. Well, he, he didn't because his dad didn't make it happen for him. <laughs> hey, who fought was that? His dad should have stepped up and made it happen. Man. No, his dad made him earn it. <laughs> his dad should have stepped up. No, and made no it. He's, just in the, he's just now the, the hero of the family because he banged up Scottie Pippen's wife. Oh, my gosh. 
And was he really better than Bronny? Did he have qualities that was? Yeah, better? he was better than Bronny. Nah, he, he also played four years of college. So he was better. He was a he was, was, 15, yeah. he was a fifteen point per game scorer his senior year at UCF. His he senior good. year, he was good. He was a good well, player. Bronny probably would have averaged that his senior year too. We'll never see it. We'll never see it. We'll never know because he had qualities that was he never good averaged because he never averaged fifteen points a game even even in high school. He had qualities that was good enough to get him to the league. At this point. See, this is the pandering bullshit that I know you don't even believe. It's so exhausting. I, I told you, I like his game. I, I truly like his game. I know you do. I do. I know you do. Anyhow, um, where, what were we talking about? Yeah, I go back to look. Shador. Yeah, look for oh, Shador. Shador. Back to Shador. Shador. You ain't one dick, bro. You haven't won anything. You're not anyone's Super Bowl. You didn't even win. You didn't even win the HBCU national championship, for which your team was so far more talented than everybody else that y'all played. Cut the shit, bro. Learn to zip your mouth and be somewhat respectful when you answer a question. I know you're not gonna do it. I know you're gonna keep being you, unapologetically you. You're still gonna toss a watch in people's faces. Another behavior that I've had to explain to my children, no way in hell. One, I don't have a $50,000 watch to hand them um, because I would never give a child a $50,000 watch. No matter but how rich I am. No matter how rich I am, I'm not giving no 18-year-old, no 19-year-old $50,000. You must be crazy. But two, because it's just mad disrespectful. And I think that's a reflection of the parent. And people, let's start back to the video that we, that we did months ago where I, you know, people that popped off the short that popped off there. That's a bad reflection on the parent. I think he's I, Super Bowl. Beat North Dakota State. What do you think? Because you know I like that type of bravado, but I like that bravado when you are actually winning. And you have to win to act like that. But they act like that even when they don't win. And that's the only problem I have to the situation. I love the father-son dynamic of it because a lot of people, like you say, they don't have the fathers in their lives. So I like Dion being in their kid life. But he acts just like Dion. But like you said, Dion was, a, they won. Dion was a winner his whole life. You know, every place he went, they won. They coming off this four and eight year. But, and they get... They got to make noise, man. I, I I prefer for them to, to get off to a good start and then you start talking. But I also want to say, if you're going to talk shit, be who you are the whole time. Talk the shit from the get-go and let it ride out. I don't want to hear Because if you do start talking after they go 5-0, we're going to be like, why you weren't talking from the get-go? Isn't that right, Rudy? If they you go 5-0? Yeah, and they start talking. Oh, my God. If they're 5-0, oh, my God. It's going to be the, the, a nightmare. It'll be a nightmare. It'll be a nightmare. It'll be a nightmare. They're going to have Stephen A. Smith and Shannon Sharp will be at their games every weekend. All all the stars will be out there covering them 24-7. First of all, it's not going to happen. But 24-7, they'll all be out there covering them, how great they are, and then they'll play a great team who will beat them by 40. And and everyone will stop going, just like it happened last year. They were 3-0. They beat a bad TCU team. They beat them. They huh? People kept going. No, they did not. Not, not the people. That, the not the people. Not the people that were. Not the stargazers. Not those guys. Not the Michael Irvins and the Terrell Owens. All not those guys stopped going. They stopped going. I mean, the, it was every every week. I mean, you're showing video of Steve Smith and Shannon Sharp getting off of a private plane <laughs> to go to the game and and, and crap like that. Like that's not going to happen. But they were three and zero, beating a bad TCU, beating a a bad Colorado state team that they should have lost to. I mean, the CSU coach blew it. And then they beat um, Nebraska, who was a bad team at the time. And then they got molly walked by Oregon. And then they won one game more the rest of the season against a bad Arizona, Arizona state team. Other than that, they were awful. They were awful after that. They blew another game. They had to leave. What game was that? They blew. They had the Stanford game where they were Stanford, up third. Yeah. Well, they were up a ton in that game. They got and they got. It was ridiculous. Stanford was terrible. Like when they lost that game, it was like, oh Lord, have mercy. Like it, it, it they're just not. They weren't good. And no, you if don't. They're, if, 
You don't, I you, don't, don't. you don't dare go call yourself the Super Bowl for other teams when you're four and eight. You just don't. Like, you just it doesn't do make that. sense. But that's just that's just the the confidence that Dion instills in his teams. His, well, in his in his, in his son. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they'll be doing a Louis Vuitton walk before they uh, play a game, probably on a Friday, and then play you know on what? Saturday. I'm, I'm, I'm actually rooting for them, though, man, because, you know, I'm a Dion fan. I'm a Florida State fan, so. I thought you were a Hurricanes fan again. I did. Cut it out. Cut you flip-flop flip, 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 like fucking weather, man. I, I said I root for the Hurricanes when they don't play Florida State. Bullshit. But y'all obnoxious fans make me want to hate listen, y'all. Listen, listen to this comment here. I want to read this shit to you. This is the type of shit that I get to look at. For you tree stumps, so I'm a tree stump, that are screaming, she rebounds her own misses. If you remove rebounds from her missed shots, she still leads the WNBA in offensive rebounds. Rebounding, nice try. No, inaccurate. Wholly inaccurate. This is from Poppy Grand on Instagram. I'm shouting you out, Poppy Grand. Poppy Grand. With your pimp daddy hat on. Look at this shit. Look, 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 will you look at this? Well, you look at this. I'll make you famous. You want to be famous? You're <laughs> famous now, buddy. Poppy Grand. Poppy Grand. I got no problem talking about you. You're Mr. Anthony Johnson. You have no problem telling me I'm a tree stump. I'll make you famous because you're actually fucking wrong. Because you know who averages 3.5 offensive boards a game? Camila Cardoso. So if I chop the 4.8 into 2.5, does she still lead the league in offensive rebounds? No. Here's another comment from uh, a Brian Cruzada Hayes. Hey, it's Bree, a man who says that. I'll make you famous too, buddy. <laughs> I'll make you famous. Remember, we talked about we were going to do this, so I'm going to do it. Caitlin Clark is not the reason why people are watching the WNBA. More. M-O-O-R-E. Okay, I can see that. M O O R E. Yeah, I can see. More. That. I can see. The last that. name. Okay, she's one of the reasons. Yes, but we're not going to sit here and act like there haven't been hasn't been players that I that that I've been infinitely that have I guess have been infinitely better than Caitlin Clark ever was. We never said Caitlin Clark was the best player in the league. We didn't say that. We've never said that. In fact, I've gone on record and saying Asia Wilson's the best the player in the league. She's the reason that people are watching. We're saying she's the reason people are watching. And that's then, what we said, and it's, and and it's statistically proven by data. Yes, it's not even close. It, it's not even close. We statistically proven by data. I know data fucking sucks when you don't like it, but it's data. Her yeah. games are getting four times the viewership on television that anyone else's games are. Rudy, her attendance you, is like is double what anyone we, else's attendance. We have is. a podcast on this, but do you really watch any other game that don't involve? Caitlin, I mean, very, I mean, very, rare. very, very, very occasionally. And and are you paying attention to every moment of it, except for you're no. watching to see the missed layups and to see how bad everybody no. else is? For the most no. part, you you're dying for somebody to, to no. catch your attention, like Kennedy Kennedy Carter. You're dying for that. We're we're looking for that. We we want to keep watching. We would love to watch other teams and other players and and let them be as interesting as her. But they're, <clears> they're simply not, and that's why. Okay, I'm. I'm. Let me go back. Hey, it's Bree. I'm. Not, you know what? You, you came around here in the post. I didn't finish the post. I'm not a hater. Caitlin Clark is dope. Okay, you're objective. I appreciate that. She's going to be great. I think she already is great. But while she may be your goat, she's not my goat. I never said she was my goat. Never said she was my goat. She's not everybody else's goat. What is this? Is this the fucking Cayenne Anthony? <laughs> Paul George is the goat. You know the best thing that. Ronnie James said his favorite player is his dad. That was the greatest thing I heard because I was petrified that if he had said some dumb shit like fucking Kai and Anthony said. And did you see when they asked Kai and Anthony if they played them two on two, who would win? And Kai and Anthony says they would win. <laughs> this guy's got no confidence whatsoever in anything. I don't know what's going on with that kid. But while she may be your goal, she's not everyone else's goal. Personally, I start, personally, I started watching WNBA more because of Angel Reese. Not Caitlin Clark. I'm going to ask you a question, Nick, and you can tell me the truth. You can, you can lie to me. You can say whatever you want. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, here we go. Oh, the, Poppy Grand. Trump sports. Poppy Grand. This dude clearly stormed the Capitol. Poppy Grand. This bozo again. Man, you keep commenting on my page. 
on our page. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. We appreciate it. You're making us important. Here we go. Dropping dogs left and right. She's shooting 37% on what planet is that driving dimes? What? Look at her plus minus. Oh, this guy's been listening to Carolyn Peck. The reason why her coach wants her to shoot less is because the analytics say when she shoots more, shoots less, they win more. Okay. No, sir. It, they're, they're winning more because she's made Aunt Aaliyah Boston a stud. Oh, God. All right. Um... What was I gonna say? I forgot. What was that? What were we talking about? I just this guy took my train of thought. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't remember. Uh, what the hell were you talking about? Oh, I mean, I've never said she was my. I never said she was the best player in the league. I've said that she. Um, first of all, I think she's the best guard in the league. I do think she's the best guard in the league. I don't think it's. I don't think it's right. I don't. I don't think it's relatively close. Mm -hmm. Um, she's the best guard in the league. She's not the best player in the league. Asia Wilson is. Not a problem. But these are the types of comments. Okay. Like, I wish I could remember what I was going to say. because I, I can't, Everybody, I can't you have your right to your opinion. And that's why we debate. And that's why we talk about it. Like, And and I like to hear your, your views and, and your data and your statistics and, and why you feel this way. But you know, let's keep it real. I mean, if you really like watch the game, don't just come at me with data and then when I throw my data at you, you just throw it to the side because it, it doesn't support your narrative. Or when we tell you that, you know, they're both shooting the same percent from the field and one person shooting twenty eight from twenty eight feet and another shooting from three, that you just thought you dismiss that point. Like and when I tell you Caitlin Clark shoots better from layups when from two point range than Reese, then you're like, Oh, yeah. yeah. Here we go. Quit crying, man. This is these are all black dudes doing this, by the way. Here we go. This dude is a bozo. This is Poppy Grand again. He's posted five different times. He's a bozo. The sky have two active players from last year's roster and a new coach. Let me tell you something. Did you have a problem when Deion Sanders cut sixty five players? Did you have a problem when Deion Sanders? I guarantee, if you're the one posting this to me with your little pimp outfit. Did you have a problem when Dion cut 65 players and gutted the entire fucking roster? No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You did not. In fact, Chicago, at this point last year, yep. had a better record than they do today. They had a better record. So they've actually gotten worse than they were last year. Although I think K Kennedy Carter is a better player than Kalila C Copper, who went to Phoenix, who yep. was with Chicago last year. You think I care what their roster looked like last year? Did you care what their roster looked like last year? No, motherfucker, you weren't watching it. Who, <laughs> what roster? You weren't watching it, so you have no idea who was on their fucking roster last year. And I guarantee you, Teresa Weatherspoon was hired because they weren't that good last year. She was hired because they weren't that good. And she's done something pretty good with that girl, Kennedy Carter, and she's making her really damn good. What are you talking about? You had two picks in the top seven on that team. Two. You think it matters that Indiana's got Christy Wallace coming back or Samuelson coming back or Erica Wheeler, who's in her 13th season, coming back? No. The only player that matters to them coming back is actually Aaliyah Boston. The rest of them don't matter. Kelsey Mitchell's replaceable. Melissa, Melissa Smith is replaceable. I guarantee you, if if I guarantee you, if freaking Caitlin Clark could replace Melissa Smith tomorrow with Stolke from Iowa, she would do it in a second. Yeah. In a second. Yeah. Stolke going if, next. If, court, she, you know. if she could run fucking Kel, if she could get rid of fucking Kelsey Mitchell and bring in Kate Martin, she'd do it in a second. She'd gladly bring Gabby Marshall in. She trusts those girls. They were good as hell with her. They understand her. They know how to play with her. They know who she is. But this crap is crazy, man. I'm a, I, I stormed the Capitol. My <laughs> God. Oh, yeah, boy, really? man. This, this, this shit is funny. As, this shit gets funnier and funnier. But you know what? You're commenting on it over and over and over again. Appreciate over. it. We appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate you, bro. 
Appreciate you, bro. You, 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 you're the one. The reason we got thousands and thousands and thousands of views <clears throat> with our small little channel that we just started five and a half months ago. We could do this all day. I could talk about this all day, and you'll jump on every one of my posts. Clearly, you're probably following me now. Us probably following us now. You hate me so much that you're gonna wait for my next post to pop off. See you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> But the statistics are there. The statistics are there. The data is there. We're not, no one, we're, the, the, it's triple. It's triple. The Las Vegas Aces are so good, they play at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in Vegas. It seats 10,000 people. And they brag about being sold out as back-to-back -back champions. And when Caitlin Clark shows up, what do they do? They move the game to the T-Mobile and have the largest crowd in 25 years in the WNBA. They didn't go to see fucking Asia Wilson play. They went to go see Caitlin Clark. Like, yeah. why is that complicated? Why does it offend you so much? Why are you bothered? Why does it piss you off that that lily white girl is fucking you up? Oh, that's because I would not be embarrassed if that lily white girl fucked me up. Because I, you know what? That, that girl can play. That's the comment that got me. Somebody was like, "Um, yeah, y'all just happy because uh, it's finally a white girl who can." <laughs> I said, there's... Sabrina came three years ago. Nobody there cared. Was whole, there was a, yeah, was, we finally got a white girl that could... I said, there's been plenty of white girls that could play basketball over there, and they didn't draw this type of attention <laughs> because they just simply weren't that interested to watch. Like, like, stop trying to throw the race part in it. That's, that has nothing to do with it. If she was black... Oh, Lord. that's where I was going. You just reminded me. Sorry. You just reminded me. You know, do you, do you think that the league is capped out right now? Talk about or what? What, what? what I mean by capped out, I, the reason I ask the question, do you think the league is capped out? What I mean by that is, do you think it can get any better from here? The WNBA? Yeah. Yes. Okay, do you think that all of a sudden, 3 million people will start watching each game? 4 million? 5 million? Because mm. the NBA... Mm -hmm. Draws a million. Uh, the, the the NBA on TV draws a million people for a game. Yeah. On on TNT or ESPN. I mean, I'm sure the Heat games draw three hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. I'm sure locally they draw three hundred thousand. They don't draw big. They, yeah, they're not course. huge. But national TV games draw a million. Maybe Christmas draws more because it's all day long and and it's you know and stuff like that. But do you think that they can be? Bi do you think they could truly be bigger no. than the two and a half million people that Caitlin's drawing right now against Angel Reese in no. a regular season game next year? No. Okay. That's what I mean. Last year in the WNBA finals, the most watched game was game four and it drew 900,000 people. If Caitlin Clark is not playing in the WNBA finals, do you think Nobody. that they'll draw, do you think they'll draw more than 1.5 million for any game in WNBA no, finals? That people are not going to watch. Okay. And that's what I mean. So what do you need in order for that to happen? In order for what? Caitlin Clark to, to be in to, to, to grow, to truly grow the WNBA. You need better players. That's more interesting. That's doing sort of the things that Caitlin Clark is doing or being, you know, captivating just like that. Will it matter if they're black or white? No, it won't freaking matter. You just need the talent to be like that or... You know, just have to draw our eyes, especially with the, the men eyes. We have to draw. You got to get us to support it and, and, and really want to watch it and leave from whatever we're doing, whatever other sport that we're watching that we're enjoying to kind of like be a diehard fan of this league. So that is what I feel. And what I feel is the league is capped. The only way you'll get a high viewership for the playoffs, primarily anywhere beyond the first round, because the fever will be limited in the first round, more than likely. Um, because they're gonna play the Liberty or the Sun or the or the, the the Aces or the Storm and they'll get they'll get wiped out. The only way you can grow this league beyond what it is, Caitlin Clark is one person. She's only gonna draw in the arenas that she's in. Home and road. They're still the Washington Miskits are still playing a thirty five hundred seat arena. The Atlanta Dream are still playing a four thousand seat arena. The Chicago Sky is still playing a 10,000-seat arena. The Dallas Wings playing a 7,000-seat arena. The Connecticut Sun playing like an eight, 9 9,000-seat arena. The Sparks playing a 4,000-seat arena when they're not playing at, this, at the T-Mobile.
sorry, at the, at the, at the crypto.com arena. Vegas plays in a 10,000 seat arena. There's only four teams that play in WM in NBA buildings, Seattle, Minnesota, Indiana, and Phoenix. The rest of them play in these makeshift band-aid boxes that are small as fuck. And they cannot fill them up. How can you be at the next level when you're not playing in an NBA in an NBA building? You can't. But how do you play in an NBA building? You need players like Caitlin Clark to be in this league. It can't just be her. She cannot carry this. Mm-mm. It will it, at some point. It's gonna, it's gonna do this. No, no. It's gonna plateau, and it's gonna drop. It's unsustainable if you don't start seeing. And I've seen some videos of some young kids. My God. These girls, some of these girls, these young girls are shooting from 25 feet out. So they're watching that the way, the way young boys did for Steph Curry. They're shooting from the parking lot. You need parking lot shooters. If you can't dunk a basketball, if they you can't park it. If you can't, can't dunk, out. you won't lower the rims. You need park, you need parking lot shooters. And if you give me four, five, six more parking lot shooters on different teams that look like Caitlin Clark in terms of style of play. Not color, black or white. It does not matter. They can all be black. It doesn't matter. People are gonna watch, and that's what pisses me off when they do the race conversation. This all the time. Does race play a part in this shit now? Yes, it's made. It's been made that way because in college nobody cared. It's like they've all of a sudden cared so much more now in the WNBA. It's it's made it. It was slightly there. It wasn't there at all her junior year. It got there her senior year at Iowa, and now it's completely over the top in the WNBA. But for people to keep watching, you're going to need players like that developed in college who develop a fan base like this yep. who will follow her to the, yeah. NBA, the WNBA who can shoot like that, and when you do that, you will get this, and that's how this game will grow beyond what it is. Otherwise... <laughs> They're not going to draw two million people again game for television next year. This is the, the, this, this is comparable to Jordan. Yeah, for now. Yeah, for now. For now, I, I don't know how she she can sustain it. The league can't sustain it. How can the league sustain it? There's not players that are. They're still not filling up three thousand five hundred seat arenas in Washington. Like the fact that they're playing in a gym that small is embarrassing. How are you playing in a building that small as a professional franchise? Yeah, I mean, because if one team could hold 20 and then the other teams are holding three, that's that's a big-ass discrepancy right there. Most of the, all, all the NBA teams are usually, like, around 16 to 20K. Like, it's not that far off, you know? Yeah. So that's my feeling on how you grow the league, because I think the league is in a cap this year. I don't think there's much – I don't think there's a lot more that can be done. Now, if Caitlin Clark is in the WNBA Finals – there's 4 million people watching every game. Will it be the NBA having 11 million viewers in a bad, in a bad NBA finals? No, it won't be 11 million, but you get 4 million a game, but she's not going to get to the, the WNBA finals. They're going to get, they're going to get wiped out in the first round. Probably not a chance. They, they're, they're, they're def- defensively. They're so bad. It's, they might win a game in the first round. They're not going to win a series. You know, they're, they're just, they're just so bad defensively. So we're going to jump on one last topic before we go. This is a lengthy episode. We're on over two hours now. It's all good. Kawhi Leonard dropped out of the Olympic team. <laughs> I don't know why he was ever on it. He was replaced with Derek White. Beyond the fact that Derek White should not be on the Olympic team, I, I mean, we could sit here and say, oh, yeah, he fits. He does. So- you can't sit here and tell me you got Joel Embiid, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, so, Bam Adebayo, Anthony Edwards, Tyrese Halliburton, Drew Holiday, uh, Devin Booker, uh, whoever the fuck else, and your oh Jason Tatum, and your replacement for Ky- Kawhi Leonard is Derek White. Jimmy Butler's obviously on vacation or still rehabbing. I would hope. Kyrie Irving, he's just a role player. He's a, he's a role player. You called him a glorified role, glorified player, role player. Derek White's a, Derek, Derek White's less than a glorified role player. Um, I don't know. 
You no, said Derek, that. Derek Wright is a role player. I you mean, that's what he that, is. The role you told player. told me that Derek White was a, a, almost an all-star. He's, he's moving in that direction. He's still a role player. I mean, he's still a role player. What he is is what he is. He, who, who, is Paul George on the on this team? No. Why don't they call Paul George? I mean, he fits the position. 6'8", long, athletic, plays defense, can shoot. Yeah, they, they, they built the the Avengers, and then they told they added what? What would you call that kid? Robin. They added Robin. And I know Robin is not part of the Avengers <laughs> or, you know, he's part of the whole DC comic, but they added Robin. I, I, I can't think of any other. Or they, they added Groot. There we go. They called, they built the Avengers and they, they, they brought along Groot. <laughs> Like, come on, group. Let's 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 do this. But I don't have a problem with Derek White because I, I don't either. I don't have I don't have a problem with him as a player. But but he doesn't belong. The, he the doesn't, on this that, team, he doesn't belong. The team, that, the team that's built like you could even belong. like talent wise. I'm not even going off fits, but talent wise, you got Brandon Ingram, you got Zion, Zion, you got, uh, Paul George. Even though you know how I feel about Paul George, Tyrese he? Maxey. Tyrese Max. We're having a J- Jalen Brown must be on a kind of cruise somewhere or something like that. He must Jaylen like Brunson. Jalen Brunson. Well, he's hurt. He broke his but, hand. Okay, yeah. Um, but there's guys. Cam, there's a Cam Cam, Cam Bridges. Uh huh. Cam Bridges is uh, Mikael Bridges. Mikael, I said Cam Bridges. Mikael Bridges is. Uh huh. Maybe he's. I mean, better. well, I would say Shea. Shea plays for Canada. You could. I mean, yeah, Shea plays for Canada. So <laughs> Chet Holmgren. Yeah, I mean, there's Trey Young. I guess, I guess, I, you, you know what? Because Derek <clears throat> White fits the mold where he could play guard, but he also is somebody who could, who plays like a freaking big. You know, he does things that six, seven, six, eight player does. I feel you. So that's the only way I can look at it, and you know, and justify it. <clears throat> when it comes, I feel you. I, I feel you. I do. So you um, the versatility of a guard, you know, somebody who guard a guard, somebody who also could guard a small forward. Derek White, won't, Derek White won't play in this Olympics. <laughs> he'll be on the bench. He'll be twelfth man on the bench. He's, yeah. Christian, he's Christian Leitner this time. Yeah. Here's my thing: Why did Kawhi Leonard even accept this? This no, position? So that's the problem. Like he, Kawhi Leonard was hurt. We knew he was hurt. Like, what the fuck is he do, even doing there? And three days in, he's done. Like Kawhi, Kawhi is there. He barely plays during the regular season. Except for last year, he played in the regular season. But <clears throat> every year, injuries is on the forefront of, of a problem for him. So you're telling me the games that don't really matter for you know his career or his season. This is the team we're gonna put him on instead of let him rehab because he's already minimized throughout the regular season. But now we're gonna maximize him during the off season and make him play games. Mm-hmm. How did that make sense from the get go? That everybody knew that this wasn't gonna work with the Kawhi Leonard situation, but yet. Team USA still decided to put him on the roster. Y'all were better off putting Grant Hill on the roster. Like taking Grant Hill out of the, the personnel decision making process and putting him on the roster. On the roster. Yeah. <laughs> and Dylan, because we knew that Kawhi, his needs or whatever, you know, everything he got going on with his body wasn't going to allow him to play in the situation. So I don't know if it was just a look to say, hey, Kawhi Leonard is on this roster rather than just doing our due diligence and finding somebody else from the get-go. It made zero sense. From the, it made zero sense. It makes no sense at all to me. Um, we are over 1,200 subscribers. Thank you. Yeah. Keep doing this. This is <laughs> shit, man. This is a, this is. A, remember when we had that 700,000? We thought that would a million, that, that, that short. And it, just, it just stopped. It just stopped. It never moved again. Did they delete it or something? I don't know what happened. Instagram but said that's enough. Instagram said no, no, we're not giving you, we're not going to make you feel that good. Uh, it was weird because that one was just flying, and then all of a sudden it just stopped. But other ones that are still posted are still moving, even though they're not as much, but they're moving. Um, yeah, this is pretty cool, man. Twelve hundred subscribers. I, I, I'll have more. We'll have more videos for y'all tomorrow. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, I just cannot believe that they even put Kawhi in this team. I thought that once he got hurt, he would bow out, and now he's there for three days. Did. I know this was only clips. Cooper Flag. Did you see the highlights with him playing versus this Team USA? I seen the highlights, but I also seen it didn't look like it was much effort given by the Team USA team. Oh my! <clears throat> like AD they won, by, like they won by one point. 
They yeah. won by one point. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Team USA, like they looked like they were just going through the motions. Not against him. AD looked like he was going through the motions. He blocked his shot, and then he got dunked on. Yeah, but AD looked like he was like, huh. He looked like one of those low motor moments of okay. AD to me. To me, I Cooper mean. Flag is Cooper Flag is Cooper Flag is special. He's the number one pick in the draft next year. He's special. Yeah, next year, he, he's special. But yeah, Kawhi Leonard, I don't understand this crap. Psst, who fucking cares? Anyhow, folks, that'll do it for us tonight. We have a lengthy one, um, chopped up into two parts, and have to clip down together. <laughs> Shout out because to Nico. of because uh, of a uh, crying baby. Shout but out to Nico, is he, baby. Is he sleeping yet? Uh, he sound like it. Oh, you threw him outside the door? You threw him in the in, in the street? Yep, threw him out. <laughs> Go finish for yourself. Yeah, you know you know, and you, let's see if there's any more stupid comments that I can talk about before we leave here. I'm, I'm, I always like this stuff. Rudy, you got one more comment. I'm going to bed. You look sleepy, man. Uh, yeah, nothing, nothing more that I want to pop off on. Anyhow, folks, thank you so much again. We are happy to be here. We are happy to bring you the fun content. Be sure to follow, subscribe, and like us on all of our social media platforms. And be sure to share these videos. Come on now. Come on now.